Security oh, already up. Bagwell. But Bagwell is injured number two. And remember, NWA representative Jackie Fargo made the ruling that Jared had to be the first one. Neck breaker by Bagwell as he came springing off the ropes. But Bagwell's a guy who feels he's got a lot to prove here, and I think we're going to see it from him. You know, it's good to see uh, Buff back at the big injury he had a few years ago. Right, looking it was, good. It was 1998 that Bagwell suffered that neck injury. Out almost a year. Sidelined by a Rick Stein. Wait a minute, was he eliminated? No, no, no. out to the no. apron, and then Jared able to catch himself. And think about this, guys. Rick Steiner, the person behind that bulldog headlock on Buff Bagwell, is in this gauntlet for the gold as well. Well, it'll be interesting when they get in there together. I'm curious if, if either of these guys are going to eliminate each other. Oh, yes! The the block 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 great. Remember, it's not about pinfalls until we get to the final two competitors. Somebody tell Buff it's not about posing either. It's about knocking the man out. Oh, just oh, like that. Oh, he's gone. Jerry Jerry's out. out. He just man. Man. Drop Bagwell. Bagwell has been eliminated. Bagwell is out I'm courtesy of the Jarrett backdrop. Come on, Bagwell. And Bagwell, a five-time tag team champion in WCW, once again falls short in his quest yes, for singles bitch. gold of the he NWA. Really Referee Armstrong sending Bagwell to the back. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the next entrant in the 20-man gauntlet for the gold. Who's it gonna be? Lash LaRue! 1998 WCW Rookie of the Year, former WCW Tag Champ, the Rage and Cajun. Remember him from the Misfits in action? Here comes Lash LaRue. I'll tell you what, Jared looks ready tonight, buddy. I mean, he has got so much. But he oh! Now that went, that was through the ropes to the floor, not over the top. As a result, LaRue is still in the contest. And so oh, Jared, because he went out uh, through the ropes. Back first into the safety rail, that steel rail. Oh, and he just dropped in throat first right across the steel. Very smart of Jared to bring LaRue back in the ring so he can throw him back out again. Makes a lot of sense. You can't win it from the arena floor. The move that he calls the stroke, throwing him face first to the canvas. Here we go. Gonna try and send him airborne, and he's gone. He's gone. Oh. I mean, so eliminated. That's two opponents for Jared. Two up and two down. Somebody missed in Jeff Cheerios this morning, buddy. He is just taking them on. I think it was Jackie Fargo that did it, Don, and he's out here to prove Last something to everybody. Has been eliminated. The next contestant. In the gauntlet for the gold, screaming Norman Smiley, the former WCW Hardcore Champion, the master of the big wiggle, born in England, an international star throughout the world and in Mexico. And Jarrett again, great strategy on the part of Jarrett. He's ready. He's waiting for the opposition as soon as they come into the ring. Look at this. There's the wiggle. Not, and he paid for not it. too smart, Norman, not too smart. Jared is all about business tonight, and everybody who's coming down here should realize that. You can see it in the eyes of Jeff Jarrett. The NWA World's Heavyweight Championship is at stake here. Jarrett, four-time WCW Heavyweight Champ in the oh, line man. and a big slam by Norman. Jarrett, the four-time WCW World's Champ, wants to add the NWA gold to his resume. And you know, I've known Jeff for oh. a number of years. I've never seen a look in his eye like I've seen tonight. There's an intensity there that hasn't been there before. Yeah, intensity, maybe deranged is a better word for it. <laughs> Whatever, if it works, it works. And I haven't seen Jeff Whoa, this much out. Oh, God. Norman is eliminated. And Ladies and gentlemen, screaming Norman Smiley has been eliminated. Jeff Jarrett is determined to go all the way in this one. I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't go through all 19 at this pace. Well, Jackie Fargo, the NWA rep, attempting to stack the odds against Jeff Jarrett by ruling that he had to be the number one entrant into this gauntlet for the gold. And so far, the Jarrett has been up to the, the cast. For the gold, Apollo! Six times IWA heavyweight, four times IWA tag team champion in Puerto Rico. Six foot four, 265 pounds. Apollo comes to the ring, and again, Jarrett is ready for it. Oh, uh, Mike, what is the IWA? IWA is the International Wrestling Alliance, one of the two major promotions in Puerto Rico. Oh, 
Man, he's impressive, buddy. He is impressive looking. Look at this guy. Quickly up to oh. his feet. Punting with the right hand. Former professional basketball player in Puerto Rico. Born in New York, moved to Puerto Rico at the age of six years old, and Apollo is in control. Jared in trouble for one of the first times in this matchup. Apollo oh, yes! is reversal into a neck breaker. Now, is Apollo gonna break Jeff Jarrett's streak? That's what I want to know. Did you see no medicine? Apollo oh, no! Jared is up. No, no, no. Cut, cut the middle ring rope and able to stop on the ring apron. He's got to go to the floor, correct? Absolutely. His foot has to make contact with the arena floor to be eliminated. Man, that was close. Apollo gonna send him over again. This time, oh no, through the, through, the, rope. through the middle rope, so even if Jared hit the floor, it would not be an elimination. You gotta bring him back in there, Apollo. Apollo just recently moved to the United States, now living in Orlando, Florida, and you know that he would like nothing better than in his debut here for the NWA TNA to win the big championship belt, the gold of the National Wrestling Alliance, the world's heavyweight title that's at stake. The countdown in the corner of the screen is on. And they're going to look for the goal. He's going on. Kane Crush, formerly Kane Quick in the WWF, just hit the ring. Well, he saved Jeff. He Jack. sure did. I don't know what the story is there behind any kind of alliance, but he definitely saved Jared, who looked to be on the verge of elimination. Kane Crush. Oh, now that's impressive. Now look at Jeff Jarrett, what very smart, taking a little breather here, letting K-Crush do the leg work for him. Great axe kick delivered by K-Crush. Jarrett getting that very, very necessary breather in the corner. Well, he's been going non-stop. He was entrant one, he's been he's been in so the whole time. And of course, K-Crush set to face Brian Christopher next week on this program. As a result of the confrontation that they had earlier tonight, Jarrett now from behind. Jared on the attack against Apollo. How do you like me now? <laughs> oh, you can just hear those there. repeated right hands being driven into the side of the head of Apollo by Jared. Welcome to America, Apollo. It almost looks like we've got a little bit of an alliance here between yeah, K-Crush and looks like It looks like a handicap match, Ed. Well, you know what? I think K-Crush and Jared are going after Apollo. If they eliminate him, then they'll turn then they'll turn and deal with each other. The countdown in the corner of the screen approaches 10 seconds. Who will the next competitor be? Who will the next wrestler be eliminated? You gotta get him out over that top rope, guys. Apollo and in the gauntlet for the goal being led to the ring by Minister James Mitchell. Slash! Well, one of the members of James Mitchell's Disciples of the New Church. Slash, who has competed in the WWF and Ohio Valley Wrestling, hits the ring. Apollo able to duck the clothesline, and Apollo connects with a couple of good right hands before Slash sends him off. Did you get a good look at Slash's eye? Oh, man. What's the deal with that? Hey, did you get a good look at Mr. Mitchell? I don't know what church he has, but it's not when you go to on Easter Sunday. I can tell you that. Well, oh, oh, man. Now, we know Mr. Mitchell from appearances in WCW and ECW. Very well known. There he is for his bizarre behavior and, let's just say, his interest in the occult. Oh, now, buddy, that hurts. Dropped him on his head with the DDT. Oh, that was cool. Apollo's the only one on his feet right now. Four competitors. Start chucking people, Apollo. If you have any brains at all, if you want to win the championship, start chucking them. You know, maybe nobody explained it to him in English. Maybe he didn't understand. Maybe it's a conspiracy. No, no, no. He speaks English. He was born in New York, then moved to Puerto Rico. Here we go. Airborne goes slash. Oh, oh Jarrett fell what, behind. What, what is what the is point it? there? Why wouldn't Jeff Jarrett want to have him eliminated? Maybe it's ego. Maybe Jeff Jarrett wants to be the one who oh, eliminates man. Apollo. Vicious elbow drop by Slash. Repeated elbow drop directed to the chest of Apollo. Now the attention from Jarrett. Del Rios. Del Rios from New York City, six foot four, two hundred and eighty pounds. Former USWA heavyweight champion, bodybuilding champion for many years. This is where the action really gets wild with all of these competitors in the ring with so much at stake. He's got a little bit of a familiar look. I can't place him. Well, Del Rios, I just explained his background. Yeah, I guess so. That must be it. 
I'm telling you, there's an alliance going on in there. Too many people are working together. Look, don't don't let that fool you, Don. There may be alliances now, but that's going to go all out the window once it comes down to the last few. Kind of like the Survivor Series. Oh! <laughs> slash fighting nine in the legal out of Del Rio. Completely legal. Slash sets Del Rio up in the corner. Repeated boots to the midsection and then a vicious hey, right hand of the Hey, Jared, jaw. Jared, look over there. He's speaking to Apollo out. Apollo on the verge of elimination. And K-Crush assisting Jarrett now. Apollo yeah. perched up on that top corner. Oh, man. Oh, what a release suplex by Del Rio. Slash now. Stay away from the action, which is pretty smart of him. Great strategy. Okay. Stay under the radar. Stay in the match. That's what it's all about. Who's next? The next Justin. entrant in the gauntlet for the gold, Justin. Six foot five, 350 pounds, nine year pro from Cincinnati, Ohio, and a former NWA Wildside champion. Justice comes out with the size of this man. He's going to be tough to eliminate. He is huge. How do you throw him over the top row? Well, Very careful. Yeah, and probably with an assist from someone else. This has gotten very interesting. We haven't seen anybody eliminated in a while. I have a feeling we're going to start seeing bodies pretty soon. Oh, what a big oh. move caught Jarrett. He deserved that one. Justice could be a huge factor in this. Not only will he be difficult to throw over the top rope, he's going to start chucking some bodies himself. He's that big, he's that strong, he's that powerful. Justice able to catch Del Rios with a glancing blow and then side oh. slams him to the mat. Scrape him up. Again, remember to eliminate. Oh! Send him all the way over Did the top down to the floor. If he can kick him off the apron, he's out. The free Armstrong right on the scene. And Apollo is on the ring apron. He's not yet eliminated. But now Slash and Jarrett double team. in the 20-man gauntlet for the gold, Conan! Former WCW US champ, WCW TV champ, where he defeated Chris Jericho, a member of the Filthy Animals in World Championship Wrestling, and Conan makes his way out to the ring for this gauntlet for the gold. Oh, rolling thunder! Great rolling clothesline. And again, down goes Slash. Conan has something to prove here tonight. Conan looking fantastic. I haven't seen him look that good in years. Turns his attention to the big man. 6'5", 350, Justice, and caught him with a right hand off the ropes. I love it. Conan injecting some fire into this. Man, I know how often everybody tries to go over the side and get him a breather every chance they get. That's the way to do it. That's the only smart strategy you can have. Stay out of the action as long as you can. Well, I'll tell you what, this slash is scary. I don't know who's scarier, him or Jim Mitchell. Mitchell looking on from ringside. You sure Mitchell wasn't on the cover of Hotel California the album? That is one sinister looking individual. Wait a minute, Powell's going over! Is he? Yeah! Is he? He's yeah, going he's over! Jared's got him! He's just a hair away! Oh. <laughs> no, he did not get eliminated. The countdown. The... Here comes another competitor. Who's next. Well, well, well. Joel Gertner. The quintessential stud muffin in his own mind. I chase anything in a skirt, and I get right up in that dress. I'm going to be with five girls in Huntsville, because I don't settle for less. I'm going to tear up the hotel room and make the bed sheets a mess. But first, I got some business with the Rainbow Express. So while all you girls are thinking about drinking a jug of joy juice, let me introduce and all you clowns get your asses ready for the man they call Bruce! 
from the Rainbow Express. There they are. Lenny and Bruce. Bruce. That's, that's quite, a, quite a partnership, isn't it? Of course, yeah. Lenny Lane, a former WCW Cruiserweight Champion. You've got to be kidding me. Are they coming out His holding partner, arms? Bruce, and Bruce is going to be the representative for the team, according to Gertner. But now, if you notice, they are all business when they're in the ring. When they're outside of the ring, hey, yeah, to each his own different strokes. Now, maybe monkey business outside of the ring, but all business inside the squared circle. Absolutely. And uh, you got to you got to reflect on the fact that Bruce is where did he come from? Lodi is out with an injury. He will be back at some point. But right now, Lenny is teamed up with Bruce, a replacement member of the Rainbow Express. Bruce to the gauntlet for the goal. Somebody's got to start a there line. There he goes! That's Lash! He's gone! He's over the top and down to the floor. He's gone! Now Big Justice sends the dog-faced Gremlin Steiner into the ropes and... Oh! oh! That's 350 pounds he just took up in the air. Oh! And that's 350 oh! pounds that he just pulled right over the top. That's two eliminations in about 30 seconds by Rick Steiner. And look, Steiner turns his attention to Jeff Jarrett. Is Jarrett the next to go? Whoa! Back body drop! Apollo's almost got cake crushed out of the ring. Conan, Salrios, all sizing each other up, sizing up what else is in the ring with him. Decide whether they want to get involved or not. Entrant in the gauntlet for the gold, Malice! Another member of Minister James Mitchell's Disciples of the New Church. Look at this monster. Oh, Six man. foot nine, 300 pounds, and he just came out and choke slammed Del Rios. I don't know what the weight capacity of the ring oh. is, but we're testing it. Down goes Bruce. Look at the size of this monster malice. Oh, man, look at this. you got to think. He's got Conan up. Conan choke slammed down. It is just nothing but bodies in the ring thanks to Malice and his choke slam. And here comes another one. Oh! Oh my gosh! Now use your head, Malice. Start chucking him. There you oh, go, baby. Bruce has been eliminated. Bruce from the Rainbow Express is out. And KK has been eliminated. eliminated. Malice is Del Rio's oh, up. Go, and Del Rio's has been eliminated. Been eliminated. Is a, is a one man wrecking crew out here. He's tossed him like five. He's got Conan. No. Conan up. Did he stay? Conan oh, 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 eliminated. Malice has been the single most influential factor in this match thus far. Shy of Jeff Jarrett lasting from, from entrant number one. Oh, Steiner oh, the close oh, line, and God. Malice dropped out of his house. There's no way he is alive. Rick Steiner has been eliminated. Oh. The countdown clock in the corner. Another competitor coming oh, out. Oh, he is. Give it to the ref. Malice, Jeff Jarrett, and Apollo in the ring. Thanks, Entrant in the gauntlet for the gold. Scott Hall. Whoa. Oh, no, Apollo back They completely in. missed it. Scott Hall, former WCW US champ, world TV champ, five-time world tag team champ, and, of course, four times the WWF Intercontinental champion, but never the world's heavyweight champ. The outlaw, the true outlaw, as he calls himself a professional wrestling. Left the WWF recently by mutual agreement, and Scott Hall comes in and is on the verge of eliminating some competition, and he's cleaning house. You know, Apollo was personal on that top rope. I can't say oh. that that's the smartest thing I'd ever seen. Maybe he thought better of it and came back into the ring. Oh, oh sensational oh, super kick 
stopped by Apollo, stopped Malice in his tracks. This guy is impressive, man. Jarrett to the ropes. Paul able to catch him. Is it time for the edge? Malice is almost gone. Get him up. Jarrett up. Malice going after Apollo, but Hall's right on Malice. Smart move by Hall. The smartest thing would be to eliminate Jarrett. Don't forget, you don't win this by hurting people. You win it by tossing him over the top rope. Jeff Jarrett has been amazing. 14 competitors have come out. Jarrett, the first man into this gauntlet for the gold as the result of Fargo's ruling, and he's still in there. Whoa, it's Toby Keith. Toby Keith has come to ringside. Is he an entrant? He's coming no, he, moment. Nobody's making himself an entrant. What is he doing in there? He has no business He's in there. He's right in the face of Jeff Jarrett. What is this? It's Toby Keith. Has Jarrett up? No! What is this? What is this? What is this? Toby Keith just suplexed Jeff Jarrett. He has just become my favorite country western superstar. He is the angry American. Toby Keith should be banned from this building. He should be banned from this broadcast. He has no business. Jared has been eliminated. Toby Keith and Scott Hall just eliminated Jared. That is the most bogus thing I have ever seen. What if I went in there and helped Malice and uh, throw out Scott Hall? Yeah, right. You you're think that would you think yeah. that would fly with you, the NWA? You're gonna get in the ring, Ferrara. I'm not gonna hold my breath. And Toby Keith is stalking Jerry. I've been holding my breath all night sitting next to you tonight. Oh, all I had was that say, great stuff. That was the most horrendous, bogus thing I've ever seen. Jeff Jarrett got screwed by Jackie Fargo. He just got screwed by Toby Keith. It's a good thing we're a TV 14 rating because there's a whole lot of screwing going on. And you better pick somebody else, buddy, because you're going oh. on. Listen to the knife and oh. chops just echoing off the chest of this monster malice. Apollo and Scott Hall joining forces and the handshake from Hall. The next entrance, Chris Harris. The Wildcat, Chris Harris. Three-time NWA North American champion has come out to join the fray. Four men in the battle, four men still vying for the gauntlet for the gold. Harris is on fire. Oh, man. There's Chris. The move made famous by the great Lou Thaz and the great, oh, look at this. Vampire Warrior has come out. Formerly known as Gangrel in the WWF. Right, the leader of the brood. Hey, he's supposed to wait 90 seconds. He came out. Oh, oh, I mean, that's the lead, wasn't that right? Well, you know, Toby Keith came out. That was okay. I gotta tell you, I'm still steamed about that. I am totally infuriated that Jeff Jarrett got eliminated, not because Jeff Jarrett's a friend of mine or isn't a friend of mine, but because of the fact that that was wrong. Toby Keith had no business out here. I'll tell you what, just the way Toby Keith picked him up and slammed him down, yeah. he had business out here. In the score. Oh, Vampire Warrior. Destroying Wildcat Chris Harris. Princes, shots into the corner, and look at Harris come back with those left hands. Malice, Apollo, and Scott Hall. So now at this they point, punches as well. At this point, who's the Iron Man? Is it Apollo or Malice? Who's been in longer? Apollo has been in this match the longest at this right. point. I, right. think, I think Apollo's been in longer, but if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, Malice has got more dodges than the gun look for the gold. Dangerous Devin Storm, formerly Pro Bar in WCW. World's Tag Champ, Hardcore Champ, and Cruiserweight title holder in World Championship Wrestling. Storm can't wait to get to that ring, and as it should be. Get in, do your damage, throw out as many people as you can. Scott Hall and the Vampire Warrior in one corner. Devin Storm and Apollo in the opposite corner. Malice getting some last minute instruction by, by Minister James Mitchell. Plotting strategy from ringside. What does Mitchell have on his mind? Whispered something into the ear of Malice, and Malice turns his attention to Apollo. Oh, Harris hurt. Oh, oh. oh. man. Knife edge chops. Oh. 
echoing all over the arena. Oh, Devin Storm. Challenging Harris. He says, bring it on, and Harris starts. Look at the Wildcat chop. And look at Scott Hall. He's just laying in the background, waiting for an opportunity. But if one doesn't come, they just kick it and wait. That's strategy. That's smart. Hey, that, that is up. That's Sitting on the top rope, however, I wouldn't say is the smartest thing. <laughs> I've got to say that. It's something that jumps with oh. Double team clothesline on Harris from the Vampire Warrior and Devin Storm. Hall like a cat, pouncing, sees his opening. Check the countdown clock. The next entrant in the gauntlet for the gold, Steve Carino! The king of old school, the only former NWA World Heavyweight Champion entered in the gauntlet. Incredibly successful in Japan for the 0-1 promotion. And Steve Carino slowly makes his way to the ring, and that's smart strategy as well. There's no sense rushing out here. Very smart of Carino to duck that attack from Devin Storm. Oh, 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 oh. Baby! Here it goes! Storm and the Vampire Warrior not able to duck that clothesline by Carino. Oh, sh shades there of uh, Shinjiro Otani. The Otani kick by Carino on Wildcat Chris Harris in the corner. Dallas is almost over! Over there in the oh, corner. very smart. Oh, into the the Mitchell. Did you see James Mitchell pushing back in. through the ring ropes? Uh, you know what? Did anybody else see it? Did the referee see it? No, if the referee didn't see it, it didn't happen. I gotta agree with you. Tony Keith can come in here and put Jeff out, and that can go on. Thank you, Don. Finally, some words of wisdom from that end of the table. <laughs> Boy, I hate it when I gotta agree with him. Force yourself, baby. Force yourself. Oh, jawbreaker by Devin Storm on Scott Hall, and then Super kicks him into the corner. Now is when you need to form an alliance. These two guys, Devin Storm, Vampire Warrior. The next entrant in the gauntlet for the gold, Ken Shamrock! The world's most dangerous man, the legendary mixed martial artist, the first Ultimate Fight Super Champ. Remember back to 98, he defeated Jeff Jarrett and The Rock to win the WWF's King of the Ring, and Ken Shamrock comes in and unleashes vicious kicks to the side of the head, first to Carino, then to Storm, Vampire Warriors down, now Shamrock and Hall. Wow. Oh, yeah! Power slam by Shamrock on Harris. Shamrock and... Oh! oh. And look at that. Oh, man. Mouse didn't buckle. He said, caught it! Caught him! Caught him. Oh, look at that! Moving down to the mat! I'm telling you, this mouth is something. He is unbelievable. He is huge. Harris almost Jack. out! Harris Vampire almost Warrior out. has Harris. Can he take him over? He's on the apron. No, he's not over. Don't ever turn your back, Vampire Warrior. That was a mistake. Harris back in the ring. And Vampire Warrior reeling. Vampire Warrior, Chris Harris, Steve Carino, Apollo, Devin Storm, Malice, Scott Hall. And Apollo has been in there for and a while. In the battle. Apollo entered as contestant number five, and he is still out there. He's on his 14th opponent, Mike. He has been out there for the longest time of any of the competitors, and Ken Shamrock was number 19. Who's going to be number 20? I'd like to know who eliminated the most. The 20th entrance in the gauntlet for the gold, Brian Christopher! By well, process of elimination, it had to be him, Brian Christopher. The second generation wrestler, son of Jerry Lawler, is going to be contestant number 20. And now everyone in this matchup is out. The gauntlet will continue until the final two men are left in the ring. And at that time, we will have an NWA World's Heavyweight title match refereed by Ricky the Dragon. Oh, Who Harris is that? gone! Chris Harris, Chris Harris is, gone. is gone! But now what we're looking at right I now, mean, Devin Storm, Storm out. Vampire Warrior. Warrior out. Three quick eliminations all within a matter of seconds. Oh, Devin Storm and the Vampire Warrior have been eliminated. Steve Carino eyeballing Brian Christopher. Remember when we get to the final two men. Chris Harris eliminated. When the final two men are left, not only will Steamboat be the referee, but NWA world title rules will apply. It's no longer over the top rope. It's pinfall or submission. Clothesline by Christopher. Carino's out.
Steve Carino has been eliminated. Christopher has come in and put four out in less than a minute. Now these five men, one of these five uh, men will be the NWA World Champion. Two slam by Malice on Christopher. And that stopped his streak of success. Look at Shamrock. When he saw Malice lift up Christopher with that choke slam, Shamrock kind of stepped back a second. He was wanting to size this guy up rather than charge headlong into him. Quite frankly, I don't blame him. This is like a pack of wolves. Uh, zero in on their play. Look at this. Oh, man! Shamrock has put Christopher out! Christopher, Brian Christopher has been eliminated. Brian Christopher has been eliminated. We're down to the final four. And Malice has both the power and Scott Hall set for a choke slam, and they double team against him. Shamrock smartly waits in the corner to see what happens. Oh! Malice just oh! elevated it back, body cross Apollo. Oh! He was 10 feet. Apollo oh! has been eliminated. 10 feet above the ring. There's three left. Look at Shamrock. Shamrock is just, he's like a, he's like a Look lion. at this. Scott Hall both oh! Now, NWA rules will apply. Pinfall or submission will crown the brand new NWA Total Nonstop Action World Heavyweight Champion. Here to referee between the final two combatants, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. There is no time limit, there must be a winner. Well, this is what it has come down to. We began with 20 competitors. We have narrowed the field to the final two. The world's most dangerous man. The first Ultimate Fight Super Champ, Ken Shamrock, against Big Malice. Six foot nine, 300 pounds, a member of Minister James Mitchell's Disciples of the New Church. Shamrock has got a decided advantage here because he came in much later in the game than, than Malice. But you've just got to, you just look at the two of them next to each other. Look at the Malice's size. This is going to be, this is going to be a battle. Oh, bam! Side slam by Malice. Hooks the leg, shoulders are down. Oh, oh, only a two count from referee Steamboat. You got a minute. Malice is taking it to Shamrock. He knows what's on the line in this. The NWA World Heavyweight Championship. I mean, when Malice came in, he's got him over. Oh. Took him over with the suplex. Malice again for the cover. And... Only two. Malice first to his feet. He's got Shamrock by the back of the head and drives him face first into the top turnbuckle. Shamrock appears to be in trouble. You were right about Malice being out here longer than Shamrock. But think about the size and power advantage that Malice has. Can he drop down at this point? No, instead he goes for a vicious right hand to the top of the head of Shamrock. I'm more and more getting convinced that Malice is a machine. I mean, he's huge, buddy. When he first came in, he eliminated like four or five people right away. The thing is, you can tell, he's got to be tired, he's in there. But he's doing, he's, it's not, he's not letting it slow him down one little bit. As we look over the shoulder of the minister, James Mitchell, he watches his charge, the monster Malice. Just three seconds away from winning the NWA World Heavyweight title. He's got him in, possibly going to try and take him up for a choke slam. Oh, reverse submission move by Shamrock. He's got the cross arm breaker. He's got the cross arm breaker on Malice. Referee this is Steve Buck checking to see if he submits. Malice needs to roll through. He needs to clasp his hands together. Did he tap? Did he just tap out? Referee Steve Buck checking. No, he didn't. Shamrock has the cross arm breaker. He's got it applied. Malice needs to close the gap. Either that or reach out and grab the rope. <laughs> Shamrock wrenching back on the arm. It's all on the line. He's got to get Shamrock to break that hold or he loses his arm. Shamrock has broken arms with this. That's what it's all about. How long can Malice withstand the pain? That's the question. And he's got the rope and he gets the rope break. How fortunate can you be? Oh, Shamrock so close to winning the world's heavyweight title. 
Malice totally favoring that right arm, and who would blame him? I'm, I'm surprised he can still use it after being stretched by Shamrock the way it was. Like I said, he's a machine. Just look at him. Well, you notice he went with a headbutt oh. for an offensive move instead of trying to use the big right hand, and he just rocked Shamrock with one. Can he follow up now? Shamrock able to duck the clothesline. The big move. He's got it. This could be the ankle lock. The ankle lock applied by Shamrock. Look at him twist. The ankle's not meant to twist and turn that way. Very smart, though, keeping his arms extended like that. He gives himself a little breathing room to take some of the pressure off of that hole. Again, we ask the question. How long can Malice withstand the... Did he tap right there? No. Referee Steamboat checking with him to see if he submits. No, he's crawling he's towards the rope again. Right. to get the rope. Right. It worked for him before. It worked the first, and he got it again. And Shamrock pulls him back. What's Mitchell screaming about? Mitchell is screaming about wanting a rope break, and referee Steamboat says no. Malice had made it to the ring ropes. I've got to say, that's another bogus call here. He made it to the ropes. He grabbed it. Shamrock yanked him off. That should have been a break right there. The submission move that has gained Ken Shamrock so many victories in his career. Can the ankle lock be the difference in propelling Shamrock to the NWA World's Heavyweight title? Malice again reaching for the ropes. Man, that just hurts. Sit here. Think about it. The longer that he's in this ankle lock, the more pain, the more punishment. And now again, he makes it the ropes. And what's Steamboat going to do? Mitchell demanding that he break the hole. Look now, at the other look side. At this. now he's hooked the ropes, and Steamboat definitely says it's time to break. Counting Shamrock, and Shamrock's using all four seconds. Steamboat getting in Shamrock's face. I like this. Shamrock, that time, was very close to being disqualified by Steamboat. That's why we got Steamboat out here. Wait a minute. Minister Mitchell and Malice. Shamrock going after that injured leg. Oh, man. First yawn, the leg. But I got to ask the question. He hasn't gone down yet. We're well, talking about Malice. He hasn't gone down yet. Does he have the drive that it takes to be the champion? I think he does. At this point, Malice is operating on just one wheel. The effects of the ankle lock showing. Listen to the crowd chanting, let's go, Shamrock. Shamrock walked right to the big this move. He motions for the choke slam. He's got him throttled. Shamrock in trouble. Remember, it's pinfall or submission. Shamrock down the belly to belly. Hook to the leg. Two. of the future of the NWA TNA organization in this program. So much at stake in this matchup. Whoever wins this bout will take tremendous take rides right towards face. a shot at that championship belt of Shamrock. Well, both of these men were obviously two of the favorites to win the gauntlet for the gold last week. Now look at them. Now they're facing, they're among the top contenders, and you've got to know they both realize that whoever comes out on top of this match is going to be that much closer to a shot at Ken Shamrock's NWA World Heavyweight Championship. And when you reflect back on that gauntlet for the gold matchup, you will recall that both of these individuals played such an important part, played such an important role, especially in the eliminations of so many of the other competitors. Well, you're looking at two of the top talents of professional wrestling today, and now they're going at it right here tonight. First thing out of the gate, and I've got to admire Jeff Jarrett coming down here to get it over with, get this job done. I love that. Give Scott Hall a little taste of his own medicine. Scott's got a lot to prove here tonight. He'll he prove it. He'll prove it. You want to lay a little money on that, though? You got it, buddy. All right, 20 bucks. Jarrett here in the early going, trying to get under the skin of Scott Hall, trying to take him out of his game. Well, just look at the look on Scott Hall's face. He is a little rattled. Nobody's, I, I can't remember ever seeing anybody do that to Scott Hall. He's used to doing that to other people. Wrestling's real outlaw, Scott Hall, back in a high profile position. The eyes of the wrestling world watching his every yes, move. Right to his face. Jarrett didn't see that one coming. Right hand into the corner. Oh! Another one! 
Hall just jacked his jaw with that right hand. You got to think about this. Jeff Jarrett is against... Yes! Yes! Jeff Jarrett is out Unbelievable. here. Unbelievable. Three on one. Jarrett sent up and over the top rope by Hall with the lariat after the fallaway slam. And as about. Jarrett turns around, Fargo and Keith are right in his face. See, that's what I'm talking about. Jarrett is a man on his, uh, alone out here. He's got two outside the ring. As if it's not bad enough, he's got to worry about Stop Hall in the ring. It's great to have an NWA representative at ringside as he pushed Jarrett back into the battle. Let's see who the best man is. To the ropes. Jarrett able to slide through the legs. Ah, Beautiful comes to his drop. feet and connected with a drop kick. Jarrett quickly back up and another drop kick and Hall is down again. See, that's strategy. That's what Jeff Jarrett's forte is. He can think through. He knows how to beat you. Oh, oh man. Take a big man like Scott Hall, chop him down like a redwood, because they're all the same size when they're lying on their back. Scott Hall in trouble in the ring. Jarrett crashing down across his back with all of his weight. And you saw that Scott Hall's throat was extended across that steel cable. And look at Jarrett follow up the advantage that he has. He's not going to give that advantage up. He's going to stay on oh, Scott Hall's man, arm. Man. Hurt. Come he, on, Scott. Come on, buddy. He knows how important it is to not give Scott Hall an opportunity to get his breath back, not give Scott Hall. Oh. Yes, sir. Yeah. Hall fights back with a pair of rights of his own. Now Jarrett able to reverse it. And clips on the sleeper hold. Again, like I said, Jeff Jarrett, the thinking man's wrestler. He knows he's got to wear Scott Hall down. He knows he's got two other guys outside the ring that are looking to watch Scott Hall's back. Fight the only it, way to do it, it is in the middle of the ring. Great strategy move by Jarrett. Negating the size advantage of Scott Hall. Employing the sleeper hole. Trying to bring Scott Hall down to the mat where they're both the same size. The intensity obvious from ringside as Fargo and Toby Keith look on. Does Fargo know where he is? I just have to ask that. Is he out here with Toby Keith because he wants tickets to the opera next week or what? Come on, Jarrett, wrestle him. Come on, wrestle him. He is wrestling him. He's wearing him down. Scott Hall is in a bad part of town right now. He's in deep trouble if he can't shake this off. And Jarrett is going to stay on top of him as long as he can because he knows what's riding on this match. Referee Slick Johnson checking the eyes of Scott here Hall. Here comes. Scott out. Hall up to a knee. Scott, oh, and Jarrett applies the pressure. And again, Scott Hall goes down to another knee. Hall able to toss him off. And he puts the sleeper oh, hands on. Turn about. Turn about. Beautiful. Suplex by Jarrett, a desperation move, but he pulled it out in the nick of time, able to break up the sleeper hole. Both Come men on, Hall, get up! Both, Both men are down. Who's going to be the first to get to their feet? Referee employs the count. Is it going to be Hall? Is it going to be Jarrett? Come on! Whoever can get to their feet first, he'll have a decided advantage in the rest of this match. Again, keep in mind, so much at stake in this bout. Both. Ken Shamrock, the NWA World's Scott, Heavyweight come Champion, on, man. Get the up. National Wrestling Jack's Alliance. Get chance. Look at him put the top knees. contenders into place. You gotta get Cover up. Him. Two. No. And right. He got the shoulder up at the last split second. Jeff Jarrett on the verge of victory, but Scott oh, Hall dug oh, down deep close. and got the shoulder up. Jarrett's oh, up that to was his feet close. first. Yeah! What a smash to the face! Hall blocks yeah. the punch again and connects again. Jarrett's wobbly. Yeah! Discus punch by Hall and Jarrett is down! Running Larry! Great move following up the clothesline and he does it again! Corner to corner! Hall in control! Go. And down goes Jarrett in the middle of the ring! The cover! Gets two! And... He got him! No, no! He got only him! Only two! He Jarrett, got Jarrett him! Jarrett kicked out! You are not going to beat Jeff Jarrett with a lariat, even if it's Scott Hall. Oh, he is pumped up now, buddy. Scott Hall says that's it. It's time to put Jarrett away. You remember, he lasted longer than Jarrett. He's going to take him up in the edge. If he He's got it up in his shoulder. He's going to take him up in his shoulder. He's going to take him up in He broke up. Come Scott on. Hall had Jeff Jarrett in the end. You can crush this nail with the right hand. Jackie Fargo. Oh, Jackie Fargo, I can't crush. Now this is what I call turnabout being fair play. Oh yeah! Last week Toby Keith helped Scott Hall. Last Brian week Jackie Christopher. Parker. What is this? Brian Christopher and K Crush outside the ring. Meanwhile, in the ring, turn your attention to the battle. Jarrett now in control of Hall. Hall able to reverse him. Oh, Jarrett drives him face first to the mat. Jarrett. Jarrett has got to maintain 
his advantage no. here. He has got to capitalize here. Jeff, keep your eye on the prize. He's distracted. Ignore Toby Keith. That's why he's there. Yeah, he Jerry's ignored him last week, man. distracted by Toby Keith and Fargo at ringside. Will Scott Hall be able to take advantage? What is this? What is this? That's what Toby is, Keith in what, the ring! What is he? That's, that's the is, great equalizer is what that is! That's a great disqualification. That's hey, if what that is. can do it, so can the angry American hit! Double team move on Jarrett! Where is the cover? Slick Johnson in two! What? He is not holding that! That is the yes. biggest load of crap oh. I have ever oh. seen! Toby oh. Keith is standing oh. right oh. there and Mark Johnson has It's done, buddy! K-Crush out, slow. Jarrett's out. Everybody's out. I'm telling you, man, Scott Hall's going to make quick work of this. All four men in the battle outside of the ring. We see Christopher and K-Crush as well as Paul and Jarrett. Oh, Paul and Jarrett in the crowd. I love it. And the crowd loves it. Everybody's in Look the crowd. This. Christopher's Hell, I'm going to go out in the crowd and call this thing. Christopher just threw K-Crush over the safety rail as we see Hall and Jarrett go to the back of the building. I mean, every one of these They're thousands with the dancers. And, all thousands and thousands of these screaming fans are sick of Jarrett's mouth just like we are. Uh, speak for yourself, Don. Look I'm looking to see Jarrett and K-Crush get a little vengeance tonight. I said it before, and that's what I want to see. They're in the TNA dancers' cage. I love it. I Look hope those things this. are built strong. Look at this. Scott Hall jacking the jaw. Oh. are wading through on their way back to the ring. Unceremoniously dumped over the barrier to ringside. Sometimes you just bite off a little bit more than you can chew. Both Hall and Christopher want to take a look out. Right here at the table. Easy. Scott Hall just threw Jeff Pierce right into the broadcast Scott. table. Meanwhile in the ring, Christopher with the back body drop on K-Crush. Okay, it's okay, done. Yeah, it's all right, buddy. You can do it, Jeff. You could do it. We're we, pulling for you, man. All three of us are pulling for you, yeah. Jeff. Speak for yourself, Marana.
can he put Kyle away? Man, his cake crush is athletic. Does he it is go for the pin? Did not go for the pin. Like I told you, this is about vengeance. This is about retribution. Cake crush is looking to hurt Ryan Christopher. Now he goes for the cover. So One, down. two, and K Crush to hurt him out there for a little while. Absolutely. Soften him up. Weaken him a little bit. And then let Jeff come in and finish him off. That's what Jared wants. He can return the favor and do the same with Christopher for K Crush. The right hands from Jared were right on the mark. Hey boys, how do you like me now? Huh? Man, this crowd hates him. Who are you talking about? Jeff Jarrett's. On the rope. Uh oh, telegraph the back body drop. Nick Breaker by two. Two count. There's a tag. See, we're seeing some continuity there. Jared K. Crush. I mean, those two have ticked off all the NASCAR fans. They've ticked off all the country western fans. Who else is there left? I don't think they care about taking off any fans. I think they're in there to get a job done tonight. And that job is to take care of Brian Christopher and take care of Scott Hall. Scott Hall is not here. K. Crush on Hall and another two count. Check it out, guys. They very effectively cut off the ring on Scott Hall. He needs to make that tag for Brian Christopher, but it ain't gonna happen. Jarrett's on the top row. Oh! Hits the cross. Oh! Roll through. The momentum rolls through to it. That was on autopilot. Had to be. Gets to cover. Oh, no. Punch oh, line. Oh, and another two count. Frustration oh, evident on the face of Jarrett, screaming at referee Scott Armstrong because of only a two count. Christopher asking for the tag from Scott Hall, but Scott Hall appears to be out on his feet. It's just you not the same go. Scott Hall we you saw go. five minutes ago. Well, that's because it's, Scott Hall has been beaten for the past five minutes. Right. He's, he's digging deep here, though. Jarrett reverses. He catches oh. him in the sleeper. Sleeper hold applied by Jarrett. Scott Hall already weakened, already winded. Now, this, this could spell defeat for Scott Hall. Brian Christopher, this is all they need. Cut off that flow of blood to the brain. Cut off the flow of oxygen. Scott Hall is going to be out, and this is going to be over. Come on, Scott. The great equalizer, the sleeper hole by Jarrett. Reverse. There it is. Hall able to shove him off into the ropes. Sleeper. Jawbreaker by Jarrett breaks up the sleeper yeah. attempt. Again, Jarrett. Oh, backdrop suplex by Jarrett. Jarrett, one of the most wily players in the game. The, the true thinking man's wrestler. He's not the biggest guy in the world, but he is definitely one of the smartest, dirtiest, cleverest, sneakiest wrestlers working today. And I have got to say, hats off to him for it. This match has rivaled any of the X Division matches we've seen thus far. We have got to see one of these guys have got to make a tag. I'm hoping it's Jarrett. Jarrett's got to get over to K-Crush. He's, he's, they're both out. Referee's at nine. Jarrett reaching for the tag. Yeah, reaching for the tag. He's in the wrong corner. Don't even know where he's at. Oh. Brian Christopher, he's got K-Crush by the hair. Scott Armstrong. What's going on Scott, here? But look, Scott Hall is reaching for the tag. Christopher doesn't realize it. He's arguing with the referee. He's not there for Scott Hall. Oh, oh it was so important for Scott Hall to get the fresh man into this match. King Crush off. Oh, oh it's the axe kick to the back of the head. Scott Hall does not have it in right now to face a fresh King Crush. He has got to get this far. There is no way he can hold him off. See, the thing is, you're, you're, you're all high on Brian Christopher. He's over there hot dog and showing up, grabbing King Crush, being cute, grabbing him by the braids. He should have been in the corner for his partner where he belongs. First chin lock by King Crush on a very weakened Scott Hall. Whoa! words. The strategy by Jared oh! and K. Crush as far as cutting off the ring has worked to perfection. No! Oh, wait a minute. Yes! Hall digs down deep. Come on. We've Come seen on, it tonight with Shamrock digging oh! down. We've Come seen it tonight on, with AJ Styles. Oh! What incredible performances in the last few matches. This is a, this is a good old-fashioned oh! match. These four guys just do not like each other, and none of them wants to let the other team win. Gonna make the tag. Christopher's gotta get in this man. Hall reaching out. K Crush. K Crush has tagged Jared in. Jared's in, cuts him off. And now they double team. To the ropes goes Hall. Able to avoid the close line. Comes back with a dual close line. Down goes Jared. Down goes K Crush. Reach back and make the tag. There's no quit in this guy. There is absolutely no quit. Brian Christopher trying to get the crowd to rally.
without his buddy Toby Keith out here to help him. That was disgraceful. That was beautiful. That was an absolutely beautiful display of teamwork. Three-man teamwork. I can't wait to get the story on this and find out exactly why. Did Scott Hall say something to Brian Christopher when they were in the corner that made him hit him? What is the deal here? Wait a minute. Jeff Jarrett's got a mic here. Maybe we're going to get some answers. Scott Hall, I prove my point tonight. You ain't worth a shit. Yeah. I beat your ass in 95. I beat your ass in 97. I ran your ass out of WCW. The boys up north ran you off out of WWF. And I'm going to single-handedly run you out of the NWA. Oh, come on. That's what I call retribution. He's already had it. No, 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 no. You can never have enough. This is wrong. What does this prove? Scott Hall, you're just like all the other legends in the NWA. Scott Hall! You ain't worth a damn. Mike, tonight, you can take that to President Jim Miller. You can take that to Harley Race, Joy Fuck, and all their traditions. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's, that's the NWA TNA trophy. Jeff Jarrett's got the trophy. Oh, oh he's, man. He's over the back. Smash it on his head. Jarrett. Jarrett, you're wrong. It's, oh, enough is enough. Get him off of there. side of Jeff Jarrett than we've seen in many years. Scott Armstrong, he is, Scott Armstrong, he's gone. Scott Armstrong, the referee is playing him all out here. here. Yeah, you bring Toby Keith? Yeah, I'll put his ass on a stretcher too. Ladies you bring Sterling Marlin? A stretcher is being brought in the back of Scott Hall. I personally will whip the entire Scott Hall hasn't Titans moved since that line. trophy came down no, on the, the back the of his head. head. The, look the, the, face, the look on the face of Scott Armstrong, our referee said it all. Scott he Hall, realizes there's something serious. I'm running your ass. If it's the Seriously last thing Jeff I do. Jarrett too. Jeff Jarrett's focus. Boys up north, ran you out of the NWO. I'm running you out of the NWA. TNA. Damn right. And I'll be damned 
if I'm ever going to let that happen again. That's why he did this. You're asking, why is he doing this? Why is he out of control? That's exactly he why. He thinks he's got he a fight with Peter Jennings. He's go just like everybody else. I'll shove Peter Jennings up his no. ass. Scott Hall, don't you ever forget who did this to you. Scott Hall being taken away from the arena here. Uh, Jared again. What is going on? Jared's yeah. got a man on for you. You're damn sure gonna find out. Absolutely out of control is what he is. I will prove once and for all that on the premiere episode, Jeff Jarrett should have walked out the NWA World Heavyweight Champion. I just want to hear the dirt. You people listen to me. to clap, yeah. everybody wants to cheer, yeah. everybody uh, loves Lord. the bad guy, Here everybody comes loves three guys. Razor, or whatever you want to call him. Oh, boy. Mr. Mr. Lawler. Well, let me tell you something. Mr. Lawler. Mr. Lawler, you're... Let me tell you what I think about Scott Hall. Well, just turn around, tell him yourself. Mr. Lawler, Not you're only what, what I think about him, let me tell you what I know about him. Oh. Scott Hall, what they call him, last call Scott Hall, because he's always, oh, oh he's oh, the last oh. one to leave the bar, boosting it up, get that last oh, one oh, in. Oh, 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 man, you better. Oh, I can't watch this. Oh, turn around, Brian. Brian, <laughs> I'm begging you, turn around. Yeah, Scott, look at that anger. Hey, it's going to be brutal, I game. i got more to tell you about Scott Hall. Mm -hmm. This is what's known as you burying yourself. Right. He's done. We call it toast. What? Burnt toast. What does this mean, you bunch of morons? <laughs> well, I think even a moron oh, would know to come around. Rodeo, huh? uh, you a bunch of hillbillies. I'll go to rodeos. I'll tell you what I do do. I kick some ass. I am a legitimate Bonafide, certified ass kicker. Hey, and if anybody doubts me, you're more than welcome to step up in the ring right here and get you some of this bad boy right here. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, I don't think you need to worry about open challenges to the crowd. You know, I, I, I like Brian Lotto a lot. I don't see lot. anybody getting in here. You what? Anybody over here? Come on down. I wasn't huh? finished. I, I, I like him a lot. That's but, what you I know, thought. I'm just cringing for him a right now. This, this is embarrassing. That's one well, grade. He Anybody will not be able to take out. Yeah. 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 I have two words. Yeah. yeah. Hey, yo. <laughs> and Hall has three and then four right hands for Mr. Lawler to the ropes. Fuck you. Oh. Oh. See Scott Hall in official capacity tonight. Number three, right? Number three, right now. In other words, Jay no, Brian, yep. Jared, yep. Brian, Brian, whatever his last name is. No. Oh, right right here. in front of the broadcast right. audience. I love it. Look out. Oh. They're on the announce table right in front of him. Right hand rocked him. Right in front of him. Team partner. Think of it as that was the night Brian Lawler was born. That was the night Brian Lawler decided to take things into his own hands and become his own man. Oh, oh, man. The entrance 
ramp, and another right hand from Hall sends Lawler down. It took him two weeks to fulfill his prophecy, but Scott Hall told you it was going to be all three, and he did it in one day. I thought it was going to take him three successive weeks. He did it in one day. He hasn't done it yet, Don. Come down. What are you watching here, Ed? What are you watching here? It ain't over yet, baby. And he just stopped this offensive onslaught. Scott Hall with that shot to the head. Well, you know, you never know if he's really keeping their purses now. That's right. Lawler now takes Hall up that stand. ring post head first. After the strong statements that Brian Lawler made last week, after the strong actions he did when he turned on Scott Hall, this is a match that can make Brian Brian Lawler. Yeah, no question. One of the most high-profile matches of Lawler's career. Looking to make his own name as a star in the wrestling business, and nothing would do it faster than a win over Scott Hall here tonight on NWA TNA. Oh, he needs to ignore these morons here at ringside when they're chanting at him and concentrate on Scott Hall. Don't worry about it. Prove to them you're not Jerry's kid. Now think about this guy, Scott Hall, already involved in physical confrontations with Jeff Jarrett and Kate Rush earlier, and you have to wonder how Hall is going to be affected in this match. Lawler has been totally focused on Hall all night. Absolutely. I have to wonder why Scott Hall wasn't booted from the building by Big Bad Bill Barons too. I think it has to do with Mr. Jarrett's track record. Absolutely. Track record is impeccable. What are you talking about? He had a shot and a shot at the title tonight. Period. And Bill Barron's had no business doing that. Bill Barron should have kicked Scott Hall out as well. He should have kicked Scott Hall out for what he did to Case Rush. Spilt milk. Scott Hall's in there right now. It's with a, Brian Lawler. All I can say is it's about time that the NWA stood up to Jeff Jarrett, forcing him to forfeit that title shot tonight. Well, the NWA could stand up to Jeff Jarrett all they want to still only come up to his chest. Jeff Jarrett is head and shoulders above the NWA, oh, and he's man. proving it. You know, guys, one thing that I have to admit, regardless of how much I agreed or disagreed with Brian Lawler's statements, he is a different wrestler. So much more businesslike, much less showboating. And you know what? Much more effective and bottom line, much, much more dangerous. Absolutely. He's in there. He's concentrating on getting the job done rather than showboat to these yahoos around the ring. That is what makes you a winner. Not coming out here and doing a little dance and doing the old stuff that he used to do. He's getting the job done. There's a cover two. I got to say, I'm surprised after the beat and Lawler was taken, I got to give him the credit for coming back. I thought he was done before this match even got started the way it was going. Well, you gotta look. Look at Brian Lawler. Brian Lawler is in his prime. Scott Hall, admittedly, not quite so much in his prime as Brian Lawler. You gotta give me that much. Well, that's your opinion. It is my opinion. It's a fact. I don't deal in opinions. I deal in facts. Wait a minute. That's my line. I know. I'm stealing it. Yeah. It works. I wonder if Kate Rush and Jeff Jarrett, who's outside the building right now, not even able to watch this show, feel the same way, Ed. Hey, you know what? Checking his teeth, I'm not sure they're all still there after those right hands from Lawler. Again, this match so important for Brian Lawler. This is the highest profile match of his career. I can't think of anything that he's been in in the match he's been in outside the ring. Anybody out there saying Jerry's kid can kiss Jerry's kid's ass? Man, haven't heard anybody that's chanting it. it, that's for sure. Period, amen, end of story, moving on. Take him out, Brian. Don't worry about these idiots around ringside. Worry about making your name. Worry about taking out Scott Hall. You can go down in history as the man who took out Scott Hall. So do it, Brian Lawler. Yeah! Attempts to come back with a right hand, but yeah! he's there to stop him. Yeah! Nice exchange. Both yeah! men connecting with Bryce. Yeah! Went for that big discus. Oh, oh beautiful. Man. Again, Super well scouted. On the button. 
Well scouted Can't by Brian that. Waller. It's obvious that Scott Hall lost a lot tonight with the match, with the fight earlier with Jared and the fight later on with Cake Rush because he just doesn't look himself out there right now. Lawler has the goggles. Is he going oh, top? I don't, Usually, I hate to... This is the prelude to the hip hop drop. He's got going up to the yeah. top, Hall to his feet. There it goes. Here it goes. Tossed him off the top rope, halfway across the ring. Come on, here it goes. To the ropes. Ducks the clothesline. Springs across. Caught him. Could it be time for the Yeah. Follow a slam by Hall. You know, I keep talking about how this match is important for Brian Lawler. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta look at the other side too. This match is important for Scott Hall. Last oh, time yeah. we saw Scott Hall, he was carted out of here on a stretcher. And it's personal yeah. for Scott Hall as well. Don't forget that part of the equation. And not Absolutely. just carted off on a stretcher. Yeah! Knocked off that stretcher. Two more times by Jeff Jarrett. High impact move by Hall. Can he follow up and get the pin? Does not go for the pin, fall attempt. Now he wants to inflict a little pain. There's the signal. That's Benedict Arnold to him out there. His partner left him high and dry. Here you go. The hey. signal for the edge. Here it comes. What? The escape. Wall is <laughs> Sends him over the top rope and down to the floor. Big rush out. Now it's now it's time for the edge. Momentary delay. Takes him up. He's got him up. And he's got him up. Has him set. Edge. Here it is. One, two. to do it. You know, I gotta say, wait a minute, K crushes, crushes back in there. Oh, oh come on, God. God. is that enough? No, do it again, Scott. Oh! Oh! Lawler from behind, three low blows, stops Hall's attempt at the, at the edge on K crush. Scott Hall got greedy. He should have left with his victory like he, sh like he had. He had whoa, 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 it. Whoa, 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 K crush has got his belt off. He's got that belt. We saw what he did to Norman Smiley earlier. Oh, no, not again. With that same belt. Oh, they got, oh, oh man. How you like that? No, oh, come on. no, that's just wrong. Oh, oh, God. How you like that? Oh, that's just hard to watch. It is. What's he, oh, no. Oh, now he's got the belt wrapped around the neck of Scott Hall. Oh, man. Not, Scott, no, not, this, oh, no. not this again. We saw it earlier with Norman Smiley. And Kate Chris is on his Come on, somebody, get this thing stopped. Don't think about that thing. I got this thing. There it is. Here we go. Pulling Bob Armstrong, an NWA representative. We've got security from the back trying to stop this brutal assault. Oh, man. Now that but took his head off. He brought that on himself. Thankfully. All right. Security from the back. Don Harris, bullet Bob Armstrong. Get him out of there. Referees as well. Escorting them to the back. Scott Hall hey, down. He's not moving too much outside the ring. Hey. This is getting to be a common occurrence here. What can you see next on this program? Scott Hall, however, victorious. At least they got him out of there. Brian Lawler getting a formal escort to the back, but the damage is done. This is what we wanted to see. Scott Hall, you can see favoring his neck, holding on to his throat, and here come the paramedics once again. Getting a hell of a workout tonight. You're not kidding, they are. Well, is this two for two for Scott Hall? Is this the second time? Oh, man. Two shows we see him on, two shows he gets taken out on a stretcher. The past two times we've seen him. But he was still a man of his word. They had that belt wrapped around oh, his I neck. He couldn't breathe. Just, I mean, just choking the life out of him. His spit was all over that camera yeah, lens for a while. Scott Hall being put into place on the stretcher. Unbelievable. Scott Hall getting Take taken out that. once again on a stretcher. Well, now, is he gonna, are we going to go through this all over that, again? You know, that old cliche about winning the battle, but not the war. Scott Hall, however, gains the win. Somebody's coming here. Yeah, another paramedic from the back. Oh, wait. Jared's got a steel chair. How did he get back in the building? Well, 
dressed as a paramedic, obviously. Doesn't matter. He takes his way back in. Somebody. Oh, oh, oh. Picked his spot. This Somebody is get him out. Get him. Oh. Scott Hall is down! Stop this maniac! Come! He was pushed too far! Bodies laid out all over! Jeff Jarrett is done it again! Oh. oh, we gotta go! We gotta go! We'll see you next week! What do we say? And he has brought his own stretcher here! Here we go! Right. Scott Hall, rightfully so, yeah. not waiting! Even before the opening bell, running up the ramp and on the attack! And Jeff Jarrett is reeling! Series of right hands from Hall, and down goes Jarrett! That's hardly fair. Jarrett didn't even come out the doorway even and talk to me about all what's over. hardly fair when oh. Jeff Jarrett's involved. He's 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 first, head first into the steel he step. He deserve to have his music played after all the things he's done. Oh, don't take the man's music away. Don't give me that crap. Jeff Jarrett's been screwed for day one. is right oh. on the end of our table. This is unbelievable. This is unreal. Telling Jarrett to get to his feet, and as soon as he does, he drops him with another right hand. Scott Hall has got an ax to grind out here tonight. He's got a lot of frustration over the times that Jarrett sent him out on a stretcher. He wants to return the favor tonight. Brought his own stretcher just to make sure. Let's see if he can do it. Oh, man, no. Oh. Got him again with another right hand. Off hard. the ropes, and again sends him off. Jarrett able to slide oh. through. Right down again. Jarrett can't get his game together. Hall's had him off balance for a moment. This One, the two ducks. Oh, oh. airborne has him go. There it is. Fall away. Slam. Slammed him to the mat. Jarrett rolls out to the floor. Very wisely. Take a breather, Jeff. Keep moving. He's behind you. Keep moving, Jeff. You gotta I get your you you gotta get your head together. Yeah, leave it. He's not leaving, Don. He's trying to get his head together. He, just, he never even had a chance to arrive. Yeah, Scott Hall following him up the ramp, and there you oh. see backstage area here at the TNA Arena. And down the steps goes Jared. Oh. There goes Hall again with more right. right. The back. Come here, Jared. Oh, this is the backstage area here in the TNA Arena. Jared has had this beat. Oh. Man, he just smacked you. Jared, that I think. The rest that is walking like out Jared of the building Lee. goes down because oh. of that. Oh. It was oh. Jerry Lennon, you're right. Now hit him, look at that, right out the door. I'll tell you what, Jared is getting the ball. Oh. Oh. Very smart. Picks up one of the set balls oh. off the from Jive talking. Yeah, just broke it over Hall's back. Oh. Unbelievable. Oh. What? Where is this going? I mean, these got Jeff Scott got out. out for blood here. Jeff Jarrett, he's just trying to survive. He's been off balance from moment one. He has got to Come get it back together. He's got to get his head straight. Not to mention the fact that we don't know what happened oh. to Jerry Lynn. He, just, he looked like he just carried bump in the face back there when Jarrett shoved it. Look at Jarrett crawling on hands and knees through the backstage area, down the ramp. Oh, now I know why, now I know why Steve Lowe gave Hall the match. Because he knew how prepared Hall was. You know, with each right hand, you can feel you can feel the payback from Scott Hall for those two stretcher trips. And now Jarrett stops the offensive momentum. Face first into the steel. You know, with each shot Look out, Jarrett, oh, you can feel the frustration that Jeff Jarrett has felt from day one here at TNA. He was screwed in the first segment of the first show. They're right in the middle his, of the crowd. They're going into the crowd. They're right in the middle of the crowd. And that is what set the tone for Jarrett's new attitude here. He is not. There's, oh, I can't really see what's going on. I know the battle is raging on all throughout the arena. The fans are all on their feet. The excitement level of this matchup incredible as Jarrett comes back over the steel. Now into the ringside area, and Hall follows him and just begs him to get up so he can hit him again. Like Scott Hall 
said earlier tonight. He said he's going to pin Jeff Jarrett's shoulders to the mat. Then he said he's going to personally put Jeff Jarrett on a stretcher the way that Jeff Jarrett did well, he's grabbing twice the before. And here he goes. He's, he's got grabbing the stretcher. the stretcher right now. Perhaps he forgot the order. Oh, Look out. Oh, 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 baseball slide. Stretcher goes right into Scott Hall. This could be the turning point that Jeff Jarrett needs. Look out. Oh. Using that stretcher now as a weapon. Scott Hall had to know. Scott Hall had to know that that was a possibility, bringing that out here. As a matter of fact, I'm sure Scott Hall probably he's got the stretcher back oh. across. Oh. oh! Those stretchers are designed to hold hundreds of pounds of weight. Out. Oh, Drops down man. from the ring apron. They are unforgiving when you've got somebody draped over them like that. The momentum has switched here, guys. The yeah. momentum has totally. switched drastically. And think about it, it when Hall went to pick up that stretcher. Just that momentary opening is what Jarrett needed, and he's taken advantage, and the tide has turned, and Jarrett now in control. That's the kind of player Jeff Jarrett is. You give him the slightest breakout of a second. Oh. He's gonna take it, whether it be by instinct or whether it be by the fact that he premeditates it, but he's gonna take every opportunity that he can. He's that damn good. I'd hate to see him get his head cleared. It looks like he has because Jeff has been on a rampage, a psycho rampage for the last six weeks, and he wants somebody. And rightfully so, now he's then, been on a psycho look at this. rampage. Check this out. Got the got the stretcher draped across the second rope in the corner. It's got over. Oh! First into the stretcher. Stretcher oh. goes down, so does Scott Hall. A couple more of those, and there will be a stretcher to carry anybody out. Jared bringing the stretcher yeah, back, back into the in. ring. Uh oh. Now what? Referee Scott Armstrong apparently allowing a little leeway here. I guess he said if Scott Hall wants to have Jared taken out on a stretcher, oh, again into the stretcher. But you know what and I'm... if Scott Hall wants to have Jeff Jared out on the stretcher, if Scott Hall brought the stretcher out here, Scott Armstrong's probably saying, okay, fine, Scott Hall brought it, he wants it out here, he's got to deal with it both ways, given or take. That's right, they both asked for this. Stacking the stretcher up in the corner. We're the ones that get to enjoy it. Jared out here with a big right. They're screaming, go, Scott, go. Go, Scott, go home if you know what's yeah. good for you. Jared's got Jared has a message for the inside fans. Jared has got the momentum here. Wait a minute. Oh, oh, oh. There goes there your momentum. Is. Stretch your first. Is he going back? Oh. I can't do it. Here comes Scott Hall, buddy. Scott winding up. Got him oh. with another right hand, and down goes Jared. You know, Jim wouldn't have been given the, the signal to the fans. Scott's got his win back. See if he can take a move out of the Jarrett playbook. He's got the stretcher draped across the road. Oh! He just won up Jeff Jarrett. Mamma mia. Yeah, one one up there all right today. Hall now with the stretcher. Oh! Across the back of Jarrett. Scott Hall is definitely getting his revenge here tonight. Yeah, this is what oh! we've been waiting weeks for. This is not Jeff Jarrett's been waiting weeks. No, but it's what the world has been waiting for weeks to see. You know what? Somebody take it to Jeff Jarrett like this. Well, you know what? What, is everybody so upset that Jeff Jarrett's had the upper hand on people over these past few weeks? That's a bunch of crybabies today. Yeah. Scott Hall's a big crybaby, because Jarrett Look out! Oh! oh! I don't... Dropped him through first across the stretcher. Upset at what he has done and how he's accomplished it. Yeah, oh, upset oh. at the fact that Jarrett oh. beat him twice already. Had him taken out on the stretcher. Oh. Signal. Could be. Is he going to the edge? We're going to take, take him up in the edge. Here Put him goes. away, Scott. Put him away. He's got him up in the goes. shoulders. Pick Pick it up. Up. Pick Pick it up. Pick it up. Pick it up. There's the edge. Cover him. Cover. One, two. One, two. Wait, oh. What the hell is this? Wait, Scott Armstrong. The hell? Hell? That's the truth. Oh, come on. The truth just pulled the referee out of the ring. Splash is by that a Jerry little payback for that little bump in the back. There we go. Cover. Oh, 
this one. Five, five, one, two. two. We Meanwhile, still have around money out. around ringside minor. And AJ Styles AJ Styles just potato Jerry Lynn. AJ Styles is getting involved. Yes. What AJ is this? Styles is the top. Oh my gosh. AJ. Oh, it went. Oh, 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 that's Don Harris. Oh, 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 he just threw Styles off the top. Here comes oh, the oh, 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 My God. Oh, oh, all hell is broken loose here. Just make next week. Look at that. We're going to get to see all of these guys again. Slash and Malash are all over on the attack. They're going to be the first blood match next week, but they're not going to wait till next week. In the ring, Jerry and Hall crawling over to each other. What man, look at this. What do you even want here? Jared sends Hall in. Oh, oh. Collision. Both heads collided. Both men are down. Who can get Who can get it together enough to crawl over and cover their opponent? Folks at home don't know this, but we got fights going on in the stands from, with uh, uh, the truth and Marty Brown, AJ Styles and Jerry Lynn, all these people that we're going to see next week. As well as Don Harris and the Disciples. Oh. And look at the count from Armstrong. Concentrate on the match in the race. He He's at six. One of these guys has got to get it together. Jeff, suck it up. It's at seven. Jeff, Jeff. Who, who's going to get up? up? Or is anybody going to get up? to his feet. Jared as well. Jared Holds up, up first. Jared up the ropes. Blocked oh. it. Caught him. Jared Drilled him with the right. Another one. Another oh. one. Hall's got the upper hand Another here. One. Discus punch by Hall. Oh. Jared is down. Put him away. Here it is. What is he messing around with the stretcher for? Cover him, Scott. If you know anything, you cover oh. him. Oh. The red discus man. Went to use the stretcher. Oh. Like a clothesline. Jeff Jarrett just drop kicked the stretcher in a Scott Hall's face. Unbelievable. Jared has got a chair. He's got a chair. Not again. If a stretcher's legal, a chair is legal. Hall started. Who made you the referee? Nobody. Jared's got the steel. There is no referee. It's a dragon. Ricky Steamboat. Oh. Trying to revive Scott, Scott Armstrong, our referee. Armstrong, and look at that, Scott Hall. Scott Hall's up to his feet. Scott Hall busted. Here it is. Now Scott Hall's going to use the chair. Oh, but it's okay now today. It's okay for yeah, because Jerry brought it in the ring. And Hall brought the Line it up. Line it up. Oh, oh. Ricky, Ricky Sebo trying to stop him. Oh. The stroke on oh, the chair. There's a cover. Oh, he's got the stretcher. We're, we're, running, we're running, running out of time. Out of we're running out of time. What? Oh, he's got. We gotta go. We gotta go. We gotta go. We gotta go. My God. Unbelievable. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for our 10 team NWA Tag Team Gauntlet for the Goal. Two men will enter. An additional man will enter every 60 seconds. Battle Royal rules will then apply until there are two remaining participants left. At that time, their tag team partners will join them in the ring for an NWA World Tag Team title match. And now at this time, please allow me to introduce participant number one from Memphis, Tennessee, weighing in at 235 pounds, Brian. Ryan Lawler, the tag team partner of the Disco Inferno, didn't seem too focused on this gauntlet for the gold matchup earlier, Don. Interviewed by Goldilocks. Well, I'll tell you what, he's still consumed by his girlfriend April and what's been going on with her. Of course, you accused Jeff Jarrett of things. Jeff Lane, he had no idea what he was talking about, but then he needs to look over his shoulder. So, if he's smart, he'll channel that anger and use it in this match tonight. And now, entrant number two in the tag team gauntlet for the gold, Cowboy James Storm. 
Well, the random draw has not been too kind to Brian Lawler and the Tennessee Cowboy, James Storm, as both of these individuals are going to kick off our gauntlet for the goal. Now you'll think back a couple of weeks when we had the qualifying match. And we saw James Storm, oh, Lawler's ready for him, and Lawler caught him here even before the opening bell. Think about James Storm, think about Wildcat Chris Harris. You'll recall that they won that gauntlet Shut match up. several weeks ago on this program. And as a result, we can tell you that the 20th wrestler to come out for the gauntlet for the gold, the big advantage is going to go to Wildcat Chris Harris, who is the tag team partner of James Storm. You must eliminate both of the tag team wrestlers in the gauntlet for the gold to eliminate the team. Once we get down to the final two competitors, as Jeremy Borash mentioned, we go NWA World Tag Team Rules with a tag team matchup. Very important that you, you, that you explain that because what people realize, even though one of their favorite wrestlers tonight may be thrown over the ropes and out of the match, they can be back in if their partner can hang to be one of the last two. And remember that every 60 seconds, another competitor will come from the missile drop kick connects by the Tennessee Cowboy, and down is Lawler. The only way to be eliminated in this gauntlet for the gold is to be sent over the top rope, much as you would the in next the next battle entrance, royal. Joel of the SAT. 22-year-old from Brooklyn, one half of the Spanish announce team. Joel immediately comes into the ring and hits the backdrop suplex on Brian Lawler. I tell you what, again, this is one of those kind of matches where if you can catch a break and catch a breather, it's smart strategy because the key is survival. You've got to stay in the match and be one of the last two, and then your partner joins you. Or if you're lucky enough and you and your partner the last two, I guess technically you'd win. Ryan Lawler now being double teamed. Storm and Joel Max trying to get him over. SATs. Both of them trying to send him over the top, and Lawler's able to fight it off. We are going to do our best to follow all these eliminations to keep you up to speed as we go through this gauntlet for the gold matchup to let you know which teams are still in it. It's going to be a chore, but we're going to try and stay on top of it. What we're going to do is keep reminding you who's partners with who for those of you at home if you're keeping score, because I'm going to tell you something. Before this is over with, we've seen how this can be. It will be a real dotty Brook out there in the middle of this ring. Who's going to be number four? Tell you right now, once you're gone, you're gone. And they are so the close event, to Derek Wild. Derek Wild, along with his tag team partner, Jimmy Rave, beneficiaries of that uh, move by the Hot Shots earlier where they put their spot on the line here. Oh, beautiful move. Look at Derek Wild immediately take it to Joel Maximo from the SATs. Oh, Brian Lawler just oh. Derek Wild and tossed him over the top. That is Derek elimination Wild number one. I'll tell you, whoa, wait a minute. Joel just went Joel out of the ring. Joel of the SATs has been eliminated. Like yeah. I said, Brian Lawler has got to get on a mission here because he's going to have to last longer than anybody in this match if he wants to win. Oh, oh Tennessee oh. Cowboy James Storm. Cowboy James Storm you know, all of a sudden, been eliminated. You, you saw get... Brian Lawler have incredible focus that he didn't have earlier. He just eliminated three men. He just eliminated Wild, Maximo, and Storm. And he was so close to be eliminated himself. If Storm could have got him over the ring, over the rail, he would have been out of there, and he just that quick took care of him. And but again, keep in mind, the tag teams of Wild, the SATs, and Storm and Harris, of course, still involved. Still alive. Still alive. The tag team partners have yet to come out. Who's next? Big Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Here comes one of them. I think it's Marcus Alexander Bagwell right. now, to be exact. He is the partner of B.G. James, and he just gave the double gun salute to Ryan Lawler. Marcus Bagwell wanting a second chance. You can look at him. You can see the attitude change. You can see it in his face. Now think if they get to the tag team part of this matchup. Oh. Marcus Bagwell, a five-time WCW World Tag Team Champion with four different partners. And that really just exemplifies what a great tag team wrestler he has been through the years. You know, I just thought of something. Uh, with the, all, any of the guys, especially especially James Storm, those that have already been eliminated, keep in mind, if their partners can hang into the end, they will be fresh and ready to go when the match resumes. So you're saying that may, maybe in a strange way that it's a bonus that you come out early and you're eliminated, and I guess that's a possibility. Well, you've got to depend on your partner to get to the end, though. Corner mount by Bagwell, raining down the right hands across the head of Lawler. The countdown 
clock in the corner tells us that we're about to see who is contestant number six. The next participant, Cole Payne! Oh man, another one of the new disciples of the new church, Cole Payne, who teamed up with Slash when last we were here for an incredible tag team match. You know, unpredictability seems to go hand in hand with the disciples of the new church. Outrageous offense, outrageous look, and we know how much Cobain loves pain. That's right. Since Bagwell off into the corner, Marcus able to get the big boot up and then cut him with a clothesline coming out of the corner. Now what these guys ought to realize is why you've got Brian Lawler gassed out and on the ropes, can't even get his breath, that's the guy you've got to take out right then and there. Nice elevation with a big back body there he goes. by Marcus Bagwell. Turns his attention to Brian Lawler and then goes right back to Cobain and drops him with a pair of right hands. Yeah, Cobain, his partner in this gauntlet for the goal, is Slash, as you mentioned, from the Disciples of the New Church. Bagwell's partner for those at home, remember, is B.G. James, who was the masked bullet who unveiled the mask. We now know who the masked man was, and he'll be out there teaming up with Marcus Bagwell. Some offense here from Cobain. Series of right hands to the side of the head of Law. Went for the back body drop, but got a right hand on the chin instead. Who's going to be number Who's seven? Coming in. The next participant, Ace Steel. This is number seven. Yeah, representing the team of Heat Breed, Ace Steel and CM Punk. And they were the beneficiaries of that uh, move by the Hot Shots earlier tonight when they put their spot in this goal for the gold on the line. Very impressive, very impressive finishing move that they still had in that match earlier when he took Chase Steven down and secured their spot in this match. A nice move there by Ace Oh, he dropped over oh. the corner as we see the battle on both ends of the ring here. Bagwell's grabbing hold of that back rope to keep himself, that bottom rope on the other side to keep himself from being thrown out. You know, that's that veteran experience on the part of Marcus Bagwell as we see Brian Lawler gnawing on the forehead of Marcus. Oh, man, come, like come on, He's Rev. He's fighting him across the bridge of the nose. Ah, do something, let's, let's, man. I tell you what, Lawler never ceases to amaze me. Every single time you see him, he just loses it. He just loses it. Ace Steele with the knife edge chops on Cobain in the corner. Brian Lawler is set to the third thing. Oh. opportunity this is for the Elvises to advance and this is their shot for the NWA World Tag Team titles. Nice takeover that time by Estrada. And maybe very wisely, Jorge Estrada is having Sonny Siaki as his partner instead of Jimmy Yang because of the size of Siaki and you're going to need some of that strength out there in this ring. You know, we talk about the open door policy here in NWA TNA. The opportunity and the chance to gain that national spotlight. Well, think of this matchup. Normally here on NWA TNA, you would have one team challenging for the NWA World's Tag Team titles on any particular show. In this match, the gauntlet for the gold, 10 teams have their shot to win the NWA World Tag Team Championship belt. You know, a lot of people at home might be thinking with this many people in the ring, it's great to have the size and the power. But I'm gonna tell you something. The speed of the guys like Jorge Estrada and, and some of the nine. others can be such a Prime time, Ryan Lee. Oh, man. Well, you talk about size, you talk yeah. about power. Here's one of the bigger Come competitors, on. and certainly I think when you look at the combined size of the team of Brian Lee and his tag team partner, Ron Harris, you are looking at the biggest team in this gauntlet for the goal. And if you think back historically, Think of the Andre the Giant factor in Battle Royals. How many years Andre the Giant, because of his incredible size, his height, his weight, he was just so difficult to be tossed over the top rope and think of how many Battle Royals that he won in his career. You know, it's amazing. We've seen Brian Lee and Ron Harris on so many occasions here lately, and they always seem to lose it. If those two could just put it in control and just keep tuned in to what they're supposed to do out here, they could be two of the greatest tag team partners we've ever seen. Action continues in this matchup. Again, three men have been eliminated. No teams to this point are out yet. That's right. All day. Clock in the corner. Who's going to be number 10, JB? We're going to 
find out momentarily. Holy oh, cow, we are gonna have a the next entrance. Six pounds! There it is! All right! Here he comes! We talked about Bagwell being such a great tag wrestler. Think of Six Pop, four times WWF World Tag Team Champion, and oh, he was on fire in the ring. I mean, he wanted to show the TNA fans what he was all about, and he has come in, I have to admit, he has come in with the greatest fire of any of the people that have been in that ring. Look at him. There's no question he has something to prove, and he's showing that to you right here in this matchup. Knife edge, chalk locked. Only oh, one. Cobain's over. Cobain's to the out. floor. Is he out? He's out. Cobain has been eliminated. Six pack eliminates him. And then oh. there's the Bronco Buster oh, in the corner yeah. of Brian Lawler. Ride him, Cowboy. I don't mean James Storm. I'll tell you what, this is great to see Six Pac at his best. Man, has he come in here determined? Yeah, no question about the determination. The fact that he has something to prove, and he's showing it here, already eliminating Cobain. Bagwell over here, right in front of us, trying to get the big prize. Wait a minute. And it's Bagwell. Number 11. CM Punk. Oh, wait a minute. We're going to. Oh! oh just, Pac just eliminated Steel. He just, steals out. Just as I was getting ready to say, we are going to have an actual full team in the ring of Steel and Punk. As soon as Punk entered, Steel was eliminated by X. I mean, six Pac. That's a great point that you make. They were just that close to having quite an advantage, to having both members of the team in the oh. ring here in the gauntlet for the goal. That has not happened yet oh. to this point. Unbelievable oh. action out here in the ring. Six Pac right now on Brian Lawler. Estrada over there just kind of seeming to catch his breath and staying away, which is really survival again. Oh. Power slam as Six Pac ran right into the move from Brian Lawler. Jorge Estrada sporting that karate Elvis look on the attack in the corner on CM Punk. I'll tell you what, Lawler has been in there from the beginning. He was the first entrant. That is impressive. He is now, we are now almost to the 12th entry, and Brian Lawler is still in the match. Think of that, that 12 entries, that would be starting with two 11 minutes that he's been in number 12, Jimmy Ray. Jimmy Ray, representing the team of Raven Wild, enters the fray. Oh, you. Just took down a steal. See him punt, grab Rave, and just cut down a new. Flipped him around. Seven competitors in the ring at this point as we see the double team tactics from Estrada and Rave in the corner as they beat on a steal. Right now, also look over here if you can see it there on the corner of your screen. Brian Lee is literally choking oh. Six Pac to death. Yeah, thanks for correcting me. You're right, it was CM Punk. I told you this was going to be tough to well, keep track of. I mean, look at it. It's just a mass of humanity out there. Oh, And yeah, that man. was CM Punk connecting with that uh, great move, driving Jimmy Rave down the canvas. Oh, man. Brian Lee is literally... Mass chaos, mass confusion continues. Who's number 12? Number 13. 13, I'm sorry. Oh, man. Oh! Ron Harris! All right, what well, you, you got your wish. Yeah, Here's the no. first team. You've got an actual team out there, partners out there, which is a great advantage because you can really work together to start eliminating opponents. And let's see if they do. That's exactly what they do. You called it. Turn their attention to Jorge Estrada of the oh. Elvises. Send him airborne. No. He's, in. He's still in. He can go to the floor. Tries the sunset flip. Unbelievable! Oh, Jorge Estrada is still in there. It's beyond me. Oh, this is, look at this. Oh, oh that's oh. the double team tactics that you talk about. Jorge Estrada is out. Why he is eliminated. Jorge Estrada has been eliminated. Oh, man. But again, remember, his partner, Sonny Siaki, will be in later. So. Oh, there goes CM Punk. Oh, well, man. And you know what? That's a team that's out now. And there goes Jimmy Ray. Jimmy Ray and CM Punk have been eliminated. Punk and Steel, Rave and Wild are both eliminated as teams now. Oh, Bagwell's Bagwell gone. Bagwell over. First Punk again. Bagwell has been eliminated. Oh, Bagwell is on. But Bagwell is oh, still the in next time. Lower. B. C. James. Unbelievable. Brian Lawler out. finally eliminated. Attention if we can back to the ring here after we get things cleared up at the broadcast position after Brian Lawler crashed into the table, sending everything.
plane flying. I'll tell you what, though. It's the first time that I've seen Brian Lee and Ron Harris really in tune together and working together and using that strategy of being partners and putting people out one by one. But we've got BT James in there, who's Marcus Bagwell's partner. Oh, and yes, even though Bagwell was eliminated, he is still alive. Right. Because of the fact that his partner is still there. Now, who do we have that are eliminated again? Uh, two teams so far. The team of uh, Punk and Steel, as well as Raven Wild, they are the only two teams that have been officially eliminated. That's why I go to you, Professor. This is tough. Because it's We're hard. trying to keep track. Yeah, it is hard to figure it Number out. Number 15, Jose of the SAC. Oh. Jose Maximo, 18-year-old youngster. Goes to the top. Oh, Ron Harris caught him in midair. Look at this. Where's he going to send him? Anywhere he damn pleases. Jose of the SAT has been eliminated. And that is uh, the elimination for the SAT. Both members of the team have been eliminated, SATs are out. And I hate to say it because the SATs are two of my favorites, but they lasted the least amount of time. I mean, I mean man. Size, power, and strength of Lee and Hurt. Oh, they oh. double team and then they just double team and eight bomb. Six pop now turn their attention to BG James. Here it is. What a force they have been in this gauntlet for the goal. Kick by six spots. I tell you what. Oh, wait a minute. What's going oh, on? Ryan Lawler's already been eliminated. Ryan. Oh man. What the hell's six going on here? Ryan. Ryan. Ryan Lawler effectively caused six spot to be eliminated when Ryan Lawler Number was already out of the match. That would be legal, Mike. Ah. Ryan Lawler was already gone. So he he is the reason that six spot is no longer in there. The disciples of the new church entrance 16 is Slash, part of the team of Slash and Jermaine, and he comes springing off the ropes to take BG James down with the clothesline. Well, that's the problem when you just get so much craziness out here. Mass confusion, yeah. mass chaos. Even the refs, the refs should have caught that and stopped. They should have made sure the Lola was out of the ring. I mean, out of the arena. But they didn't. And what happened? It caused six back. But he's still alive. So he's alive because Scott Hall. Hall is yet to come out. We'll find out what number Scott Hall is, I'm guessing, momentarily. I'll tell you what, BG James has been taking a beat since he got in there. I mean, right now, look at this. She, like, uh, instead of concentrating on Slash, all three of them are partnering up and going to BG James. Let's go! Well, impact in the corner that time as James goes back first into the turnbuckles. Got it. Give it. Entrant number 17, Sonny Siaki. Sonny Siaki will be flying Elvis's out next. Oh, beautiful. I'll tell you what. Oh, did you see that? Great twisting leg drop that time by Siaki on Slash. BG James, of course. Trying to stay alive, he's got Harrison Lee both on him, but man, he's doing a hell of a job. Sure is, trying to fight his way out of the corner against these two. Five men in the ring at this point in time. We still have three more contestants in the gauntlet. And we know that number 20 is going to be Wildcat Chris Harris. That's what we know so far. 18 and 19, yet to find out. Scott Hall will be one of them. It has to be. And of course, the other just by means of elimination has to be Disco Inferno. You know, what an advantage it is for those coming in at the, the end. Everybody else square themselves Number out. Number 18, the Disco Inferno. He is the tag team partner of Brian Waller. Disco Inferno back here on NWA PNA and back in the gauntlet for the goal. Ron Harris putting a beat on Siaki in the one corner. Last trying to get his breath in the other. And you look Brian Lee and Disco BG James. slowly yeah. getting into the ring. Not only the fact that he was number 18, also trying to survive here and just unleashes a right hand on Sonny Siaki. It is all about survival in this gauntlet for the goal. Great to see Disco Inferno in the ring. Oh. Oh. Yourself. <laughs> 
Giving the signature move. I'll tell you what, though, Ron Harris has been determined out there. And both Ron Harris and Brian Lee have really proven themselves here in this matchup, in this gauntlet for the gold. BT James and Brian Lee are still grappling over on the one side. Siaki almost over the ropes. But we know that Scott Hall has to be next That's because right. Chris Harris is 20. Number 19. You know it. Here he is. Scott Hall. He is the partner of six months, of course. Former WCW World Tag Team Champion Scott Hall headed to the ring. Right now, BT James, Brian Lee, Scott Hall, slash Ron Harris, just going forward with Sonny Siaki. All in the ring at the same time. Thank you for running down the roster of, of who's in there. I needed that. Hey, you know what? It is confusing. It's one of those, I try to watch the monitor. When I do that, I miss something over in the ring. You know where to look. Disco and Siaki on the uh, one side of your screen. Now the attention goes to the corner where we see Scott Hall and Big Ron Harris. Hey, when I see slashes bleeding from the mouth and the nose. Check out Brian Lee up on top. I think he was going to go oh. for a high-risk move from the big man and instead get back into the ring. Trying to put Scott Hall. Man, I'll tell you what, you talk about size. Ron Harris and Scott Hall on each other. Oh, wait a minute. Scott Hall. No. Elevated and he's out. Harris. Ron Harris is out. Harris is gone. Scott Jesus. Hall just back body dropped him. Oh. He just put Ron Harris out. I don't Number know what it is. Saw a body fly out on the floor. Yes, yes, you're right. Is that Slash that's been eliminated? Slash is eliminated. Slash has been eliminated. And that means that uh, Slash and Cobain now are both out. That team is out. And there goes Sonny Siaki. Hey, Siaki. The Elvises are out. Eliminated. The Elvises are gone. Uh -oh. Tell you what. Uh, Disco, there's your wake up call. <laughs> you know what? You don't have time to be showboating and prepping in this match. Now with the call that's going on. Oh, man. I'll tell you what, though. Look at this. Wildcats just about got Brian Lee over the ropes. Just about got him. That would eliminate the team of Brian Harris if he can get Brian Lee over. Smartly watch this. Scott Hall staying out of the way. Catching the fifth. And there goes there. Go. 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 still alive. Harris is in trouble, the team of Harris and Storm in trouble because his partner, 
James Storm has been laid out on the ramp, and it's all about Harrison Lee. I was just getting ready to say, the Wildcat has been laid to the wolves, buddy, because Ron Harris choke slam Storm outside the ring, and Storm is still down. He is still down, so Wildcat Harris is one on two right now in the ring. But the Ryan Lee and Ron Harris can become the tag team champions, and you know they wanted it. They have, they have just tried to disrupt every tag team match we had. So now they've got their chance. Oh, Storm almost made it back in. And gutsy, gutsy effort on the part of the Tennessee Cowboy, James Storm, to make his way back to the ring, but then he's met by that big knee from Ron Harris, and he's sent right back out. Speaking of gutsy performances, check out the southpaw, Wildcat Chris Harris, in this basically one-on-two situation. He's turned things around, but then he ran right into the corner. Oh! I'll and as he you. came out of the corner, he was flattened with the clothesline by Big Brian Lee. I look at the size of Brian Lee and Ron Harris. Cover, two, kick out. And the last person I'd want to be in the world right now is Chris Wildcat Harris. We got too many Harrises and too many James out here. <laughs> James Storm sent out to the arena floor by the running knee from Ron Harris. Meanwhile, Ron Harris's tag team partner, Brian Lee, turns his attention oh. to Wildcat and sends Chris Harris into the big boot of Ron. Now it's Harris versus Harris. No relation, of course. Ron and tag partner, Brian Lee, send the Wildcat into the ropes. Oh, man! Drive him down to the canvas with a double team move. James Storm has still not even been able to make it. Here he comes! Here he comes! And there he goes. Oh, man. As Soon as he gets into the ring, He's met by both Brian Lee and Ron Harris. Oh, man. Who's it going to be? i tell you who it's going to be. Lee and Harris yep. are dominating, and they're getting ready. It's Storm. Landed on oh, his feet. Yeah. Ducks one clothesline. Yeah. Connects, and then caught him with a big four. The Cowboys. The Tennessee Cowboys on fire. I don't believe it on Steve. I do not believe it on Steve. What a comeback by James Storm. Uh-oh. <laughs> Team, drive him down, in style. Harris and Lee are just too strong. They have been working together all night. They've been physically dominant throughout this entire matchup. And they continue to assault the opposition. At this point, it's Wildcat Chris Harris and James Storm, but now Ron Harris what has got world? a table from under the ring. What in the world? This is, I mean, it's, it's NWA TNA is what it is. It's that. total nonstop action. And Ron Harris has got the table, and they're going to try and put Storm on the table. Well, I'll tell you what. Ever since Storm came in to enter the tag team finals, he has been taking a beating. On the receiving end of a tremendous beating by Lee and Ron Harris. What's Lee doing now? Anything he wants. I'll tell you what. They have been dominant. He's been a oh, whoa. Whoa. He's rolling. And Brian Waller, you know, Waller, as you mentioned, he was already eliminated from that gauntlet for the gold matchup and eliminated, by the way, by Six Pac, along with Harrison Lee. But then at that point, he stayed around ringside, sort of under the radar and out of sight of NWA referees. He was able to help eliminate Six Pac. I think a lot of that stems from jealousy. The crowd, of course, last week were so behind Six Pac and Scott Hall. Big crowd favorites here. And he just saw an opportunity and he took it. Six Pac and Elix Skipper to hook it up here in the opening minute of this contest. It's good to see Elix Skipper back in the ring. It's been a few weeks. One of the best we've ever seen. Another great X Division performer. And you know what? Low key now down on the bottom of the, of the, of the ladder. Elix Skipper's somebody that needs to be looking ahead. Maybe in a future shot in the next division championship. Six box list of accomplishments, certainly impressive. Four times, WWF World's Tag Team Champion, WCW Cruiserweight Champ, Matrix move there by Skipper to avoid the offensive assault by Six Pack, and he turns things right around and Brian Lee celebrates. And we were talking about 
six bucks credentials. And we mean to add WCW Cruiserweight champ, WWF European, WWF light heavyweight title holder. Quite a resume for six Pac, and he turns things over to Scott Hall. Now this looks like a mismatch when you first look at it. Scott Hall, he looks Skipper, and you know what? Maybe Skipper was thinking the same thing because he tagged Brian Lawler. And the very unfocused Brian Lawler. Yeah, he's paying way too much attention to his girlfriend April here. No way that you can do that against wrestlers like a six pack, like a Scott Hall. Let's see if he can remain focused here in this tag matchup. I'll tell you what, two greats right there. Again, now what? losing his focus. Now what? Even Scott Hall's confused. I'll tell you what, I don't know, I mean... Totally preoccupied with his girlfriend, April. I mean, we hear the we hear rumors and we can see what's going on, but we saw, we saw Jeff Jarrett even try to talk us into the Brian Lawler a couple weeks ago and let him know that, hey! I wonder what we, she was going to say. It, it was almost as if Brian Lawler yeah. cut her off during that interview. Yeah, it did. something about how she's been mentally and... I don't know, yeah. was she going to say... Verbally, she said verbally and mentally. Physically, I, yeah, That's what it sounded like. Fuck! Now what? Like, doing? We're gonna have to do something here. We got a match. We got Scott. Oh, look at Scott Hall and Six Pack are absolutely. T take a look up at Elix yeah. Skipper. Even you can see his own tag team partner has a look on his face of like, what the hell's going on? I don't know. This is just. All right, there, Skipper. Good move. He's Elix. Elix will get the focus going here because Brian Lawler is absolutely. Mentally out of this match, Mike. He is, he's gone. Yeah, it's what we've seen from him over the course of the past several weeks. I mean, it's, uh, it's trying to feel sorry for us. Trying to turn our attention back to the ring with Scott Hall and Elix Skipper in the reversal. Sends Hall into the corner. Scott able to get the big boots up. Stopping Skipper right in his tracks. And oh. Takes him up and drives him right down. Choke slam style. Cover. Got two. I'll tell you what, though, this does do is it actually takes six pockets. Scott Hall out of their game. You know, they come in here, they're ready to get, get it on, and all of a sudden, they're having to deal with this crap. Yeah, it just stops everybody's momentum in this matchup. Seeing what's going on with Brian Lawler around the ringside area. And now they oh. double team. Lawler dropped down, and oh, man. oh they're going to make a wish oh. in the corner with Scott Hall. If, if Brian Lawler was smart, whatever, whatever oh. anchor he's feeling right now, he needs to chill. Yeah, towards his opponent. Towards the opponent. Not his girlfriend. And, and deal with this after the match. But, well, you know. Focus your aim in the right part. Oh, is that beautiful. Beautiful hang time by Illich Skipper out of the corner. Drops the leg. Goes to the cover, too. Scott Hall powers out. I think if I can Scott Hall got to get their mind back here, too. they got to just put it inside whatever's going on with Brian Law. Skipper on the offensive for the team of Elite Skipper and Brian Lawler. Now smart ring positioning. Moving Scott Hall into the corner. They're going to try and cut off the ring now, and they double team. You see that Brian Lawler, he's got the ponytail of oh, Scott man. Hall. Yanking back on the head and neck of Scott Hall. Keeping a position in the corner, and now biting oh. right across the bridge of the nose. That's not what I meant by channeling your anger, but that's what he's doing. He's just, whatever he, demons he's got, he is taking them out right there. Tang is in to Brian Lawler, the legal man against Scott Hall. And Lawler, a vicious right hand, and then looks across the ring at Six Pac. Had some words for him as well. Hall to the corner. Fires him off. Diagonally to the corner, turns up. Gets a head of steam out of the corner. Caught him with a shoulder block right at the midsection, right at the trunk level. Hooked the leg and got a two count. Referee Rudy Charles down for the two. You know, this isn't even the Scott Hall we're used to seeing. Everybody is just totally in disarray out here right now. 
Elevation oh. kind of took the big man up and over with the vertical suplex. And immediately licks down here to ringside to April. Almost demanding the yeah. applause from her. You know, I understand trying to uh, win the uh, graces of a beautiful woman, but you gotta be focused out there. Oh, man. Double team tactics. Certainly doing the trick for Skipper and Lawler. Turns things over now to Skipper, who just caught the six mark on the ring apron. Caught him with a forearm, turns his attention back to Hall, decked him with a forearm smash. Six back dying to get back out there, but Scott Hall has actually been taking a pretty rough beating out there between Skipper and Lawler. Went for the kick. In too tight. Hall able to block it. Skipper with boots. Went for the kick again. Now Hall caught him. There it goes. Dropped him down to the mat. That's what we were waiting for. There it is. Both men down. Referee puts in the count. Now, here's Lawler. Concentrate on the match, Brian. I think, he, I think April now. I don't know if she's crying or not. Don, what are you doing? Don West down here. Don West just concerned about Brian Lawler's girlfriend. Okay, Don. I understand you were just concerned about her. Check this out back in the ring. Six Pac in with Skipper. Six Pac caught him, drove him down with the leg. Nice oh, edge chop. Reversal now off into the ropes. Oh, beautiful! Stop him in mid move. Stop, drop, power bomb, and there's one for Lawler. Brian Lawler out to the floor. Back in the ring, legal man is Skipper. Got the boot up. Oh, big kick by Six Pac. Man, is he ready to go? I think he was just getting frustrated watching all this going. Oh, oh man! Drive him down, face. Here it is. Their frustration has just boiled over. They don't know what's been going on. They've been watching Brian act ridiculous out here with his girlfriend, and they're be ready to take it out on some people. Skipper ducks the clothesline. Scott Hall picks him off in midair. Oh, All the way slam. Getting the crowd back into it. Skipper to the corner, and Hall follows up with the clothesline that rocked him. Oh, are, you, yeah. are, are you ready to yes. bust? Are you ready to your Bronco. Oh, oh, man. When you telegraph it like that, that gives the other guy a chance to move. Oh, man, here's no one. Brian Lawler back in the ring. Just decked Hall from behind. Now Skipper up to the top. Up off the top rope. Oh, Dude, it down. By X Six One, there it is. two, three. Got him. The winners of the bout. Six Hawk and Scott. Turns his attention to Hall. Boy, oh, beautiful. And the carry kick history. rocked him. Gonna stroke him. Oh. Wow. You know, he talked about these roadblocks still focused on his way to the NWA title shot in his mind. Security this. coming out. Not much effect by security as we see Jeff Jarrett, he's Brian of, Lawler. He's out of control. Inuik Skipper. Lawler's all been out of attention. control. Putting the boots to six pocket Scott Hall. More security's coming out. I'd stay away, buddy. Look at this. What he's got? What, what he's got? Into Jeff Jarrett. Zero effect from our NWA security crew trying to come out here and stop this onslaught. Here comes. Here they come. Here comes Don Harris, head of security from the back, and that'll stop him. That'll stop him right in their tracks. Yeah, Jarrett, Waller, Skipper. They wisely think better of the situation once the head of security, Don Harris, gets out there. I understand it. Well, sit tight. Goldilocks is in the back, I think, with AJ Styles. Scott Hall just grabbed the mic from Jerry Borash. You ready? <laughs> Two of the most famous words in wrestling. The hesitation from Hall.
I know I'm not supposed to be out here now. I'm supposed to wait till later. But I'm not that good at following the rules. That's why we love you. And I've been trying my best to be a good boy since I got here. And I'm sick and tired of tying. I mean, sick and tired of... Anyway, something like that. I can't be a good boy is what I'm trying to say. And Jeff Jarrett, I heard that you had some things to say about me. So from now on, I'm just going to do whatever I want. And Jarrett, I want you. Now? I mean, they're scheduled to wrestle tonight, but that's later in the broadcast. And his opponent. When Hall eliminated Jared from the gauntlet for the gold. To this matchup, these two heated rivals go at it again here on NWA TNA. And Mike, you said it right. Heated rivals, they've been rivals ever since the beginning. Ever since the beginning of NWA TNA. And then, when Scott had to be absent for a few weeks for personal reasons, Jeff Jarrett, of course, gave his opinion and had just ticked Scott off, and he wants to take it to him right now. In the four-month-plus history of NWA TNA, these two individuals have battled on two occasions in singles matches, with each man scoring a controversial victory. Oh, man. Two of the greats. Two of the best in the business. Oh, there's the opening that Jarrett was looking for. The offensive attack. The series of boots by Jarrett follows up with a right hand that was right on the jaw. And I just realized something, Mike. No matter what happens here, Kurt Henning challenged Jarrett to a match next week. If Henning can beat the truth later on tonight, Jarrett will finally have his title shot. What a good point. Jarrett at this point. With total concentration on Hall. The reversal into the ropes, ducks the clothesline. Oh! Hall's got him. Got him. He's gonna take him overhead. He says yes. Oh, 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 man. And Jared says he's heading up. Heading up the ramp and Scott Hall in pursuit. What in the world is Jared walking off? See Jared walk off. Yeah, I don't even think he knows where he's going, Mike. They battle out into the TNA asylum. Looks like Hall oh. got the trash can. And it looks like he just nailed Jared with the trash can and beat him again. And just like the Siaki Lin match before this, this is a grudge match. And if this is a grudge, this is a rivalry that goes back some. Place to be, and Scott Hall is just wailing on him right here at the table. The 
pulls him back in yeah. the ring. He realizes that he's got to finish him off in the ring. He's weakened him outside. Now can Scott Hall put Jarrett away? Reversal by Jarrett. Telegraph the back body drop and Hall nailed him with the knee. Boot to the midsection. Can he take him up for the edge? Oh, beautiful move by Jim Jarrett. What a counter. It's all about the familiarity between these two wrestlers. They've been in the ring on so many occasions that Jarrett was able to anticipate the move from Scott Hall. Jarrett was able to counter the move. He elevated Hall up and over the top and down to the floor. And now Jarrett to the attack. The experience between these two added up. It's over the way. Unbelievable. I mean, there is no holds barred. Steps, chairs, garbage cans, guardrails. This is all about pain. It's all about pain. As Jeff grabs another chair. Jared going over to Oh, right in the gut. Steel chair in hand, and Jared drives it. Right into the midsection of Hall. Gonna roll him back into the ring. Oh, man. The intensity level of every match this week on NWA TNA has been absolutely off the charts. And Jarrett goes to the corner mount, raining in those right hands, repeated rights to the top of the head. And referee Rudy Charles warns Jarrett. Jarrett gets in his face and comes back. Rock Scott Hall with the right. That one may have loosened a tooth. And what's stake, what's at stake right here, Mike, is pride. Pride, pride of knowing you have just defeated this opponent in front of this sold out crowd. Go! Oh. Again, the familiarity of these two men. Jarrett saw the move coming. Oh! And able to turn the tide. Just rammed his head against the ropes. Thought he was gonna go for the strut that time, but instead realizes this matchup's too important. Just raining blows right out of the face of Scott Hall. Series of right hands to that giant. Look at Hall fight bow. To the ropes goes Jarrett. Oh. Spinning sit out neck breaker by Jarrett. Two. No. Shoulder is able to get up. One. To the cut. Two. Feet are on the ropes. Oh, oh, oh. Gotta be careful how Rudy Jones, how you talk to him in that ring. These two don't care about rules. They don't care about ropes. All they care about is beating the other one to a pulp. To the ropes goes Hall. Ducks the back elbow. Oh, Jarrett so wisely climbs on. Puts the sleeper hole oh. on Hall. The key to this move, wear Scott Hall down. Suck Get him that. down to the mat. You're right, take the wind away from Scott Hall, but at the same time, take away the height advantage that Scott Hall has as well. Oh, and he's got him in a good one. Look at this. Perfectly positioned behind him. He's trying to bring him down to his knees, and he is. Scott Hall reaching out, trying to get a rope break, and instead, Jarrett just cranks on the sleeper even harder and drops him down to the mat so that Hall can't make it to the ropes. Oh, man. Scott looks like he could be out. Like you said, the oxygen is gone. It's up to referee Rudy Charles at this point to check to see if Scott Hall is still able to continue. Jarrett cinches in the sleeper oh, even tighter. He is just showing no let up right here. Literally. You can see the face going white. You know, and with a veteran like Scott Hall, you got to do whatever you've got to do. Scott Hall oh. trying to dig down deep, trying at least to get to a knee, and he gets to a knee. Oh. Momentarily able to get to both feet, and then Jared takes him back down. But now Hall shoots him off into the ropes. Oh. Went for the hip toss, blocked by Hall. Stop! Oh. Slam by Scott Hall. Desperation move, and it paid off. Scott Hall had to do that. Right now, Scott Hall's trying to get the air back into his lungs, get his strength back, and it took just an incredible choke slam to Jeff Jarrett. But now, they've got to get up. Rudy Charles is counting him out as we speak. Referee Charles putting in the count. 
both Hall and Jared out. I believe the count is at six, if I'm hearing him correctly. Seven now, I believe. Jeff Jarrett is slowly getting to his feet, going over for the cover. One on the cross, two. two. No, oh, man. Still life left in Hall. Showing no quit. Absolutely showing no quit. Jarrett measures him. Oh, by Hall. Hall connects with a right. Oh. again and another right by Hall. Going to wind up. Whoa. Almost got the referee. Oh. Oh. Jarrett went for the clothesline on Hall. Referee Charles knocked out. Talk about being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Rudy Charles was. Jarrett coming over here, probably another steel chair. Steel chair. What the hell? What's going on here? It's the lights are out oh, here in the TNA asylum. Kurt Henning, you know you never cease to amaze me. Maybe I've been giving you too much thought because you got a match with me tonight and you're out there playing with your old buddies. Well, you know what? Tonight, I'm going to be in your ass like an old cold rectal thermometer. <laughs> Man! NWA champ Ron The Truth Killings talking to Kurt Hennigan. Oh, the lights are back on here in the asylum. Hennigan the ring. Look out! Brian Lawler from behind! He's taking it out right now on Kurt Hennigan. Here comes BG James! BG James to even the score. Those two are going to fight later tonight. And look Lawler on his bicycle. Look at him bail. Jared Hennig, who will go at it next week, are going to go at it right now. Here comes the stroke. Oh. Blocked. Oh. oh. Well, remember last week, it was the low blow on Hennig from Jared. This time, it's payback from Hennig. Scott Hall's got him up. Look at Jared trying to fight it off. off. He's got him up again. Him. Can he drop it? No. Can he drop it? He just did. There's the edge. As Hennig grabs the referee. Yo, champ, you shouldn't waste your energy bad-mouthing the fans. You need to quit being Jeff Jarrett's little stooge. Because Chico, he's playing you like one of Ricky Ricardo's bongo drums. <laughs> And you're so worried about Mr. Wrestling 3, you need to be worried about me. So how about you just give me a big old dose of the truth? And it is time for the NWA World's Heavyweight Championship matchup. Ron The Truth Killings, one-on-one -on -one with Scott Hall. Very interesting to hear the conversation. The pre-match comments from both of these individuals, both of them centering on Mr. Wrestling 3 and his possible identity, as Scott Hall's quite happy with his toothpick aim that time, right between the eyes of the truth. Have you heard the rumors that I have, like Ron The Truth Killings mentioned, that Mr. Wrestling 3 just might be Jeff Jarrett? I've heard it could be about one of about eight people, Mike. I'll be honest with you. I've heard it could be anybody, but I think that's just something they're trying to use to psych the other man out, and, and 
I think Scott Hall said it best. You need to be worried about me right now. Yeah, that is the key. Do not lose your focus because we've certainly seen that in the past several weeks, Mr. Wrestling 3 usually seems to come out here during a match involving Ron the Truth Killings. And there's always something involving killings, and you could certainly tell that Mr. Wrestling 3 is on the mind of the world's heavyweight champion. Yeah, that's for sure. I don't I just don't see how it could be double J because I believe, you know, he's been out here. The two have been out here, I believe, at the same time or very close to it. So I don't see how that could be. But hey, everybody's got their opinions, Mike. That's the beauty of it. Nobody knows who it is. Scott Hall using the dreads of the truth as a handle. Oh, man. He's gone back to the basics. How about that? That's a six foot seven, 270 pound submission hold right there, Mike. Yeah, we showed you the tail of the tape prior to this matchup, and it was obvious the advantages that Scott Hall has in this bout against the truth. On the opposite side, will the truth be able to use what would uh, be perceived to be a speed advantage against Scott Hall. Definitely a lot the quickness. Just the quickness aspect. Stay one step ahead of him. As well as, of course, having the world's heavyweight championship belt already around his waist. Jack the jaw of Scott Hall with a pair of right hands. What do you got to say about the truth, Mike? He has not backed down from anyone. Whether it be Kurt Hennig, Scott Hall tonight, he's taking them all on. And he is the champ. And until somebody beats him, he's still the champ. Great move that time by Kevin to avoid Hall. Comebacks and takes him down to the mat. Hall quickly gets to his feet, however, but walks right oh. into a scoop. Look at this. He's Man. going up. He just picked up him and like power slams Hall down to the mat. Like he was his kid brother, Mike. He picked him up and just power slam him. I'll tell you what, the truth you know is ready for this. Look at it. Flying forearm smash delivered by the champ for the cover. Hook of the leg and a two count on Scott Hall. Crowd got quiet in a hurry when the truth took over in this match, just like he has here at the beginning. You know, again, you, you, you mentioned about the size and the power. I don't know that Ron Hall has, I mean, Scott Hall has seen anyone with the quickness and the speed and the agility of a Ron the Truth Killings. In the, anyway, not in the, 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 the near past, anyway. And when you take into account that Ron the Truth Killings, oh. who just hit the axe kick to the back of Scott Hall, has taken on several X Division competitors in his title defenses, now goes for the cover against Hall and gets another two count. When you factor that in, he's wrestled a lot of the smaller, quicker wrestlers, has Ron Killings, and Scott Hall by far is the biggest of the opponents that he has faced in a championship matchup. That's what makes Ron the Truth Killing so great here as we get to see him coming off the top rope. Oh! Scott Hall is taking a beating. You know, you made such a great point, Mike. He has been the most versatile of all the wrestlers in NWTNA. From taking on anybody from, from Jerry Lynn to Six Punk to Kurt Henning. He has run the gambit, so to speak. Guillotine leg drop off the top was delivered by the champ. And he but, learns a little bit from every one of them. But you notice he was slow to make the cover that time on Scott Hall. I think that, that time frame before he went for the pin was just what Scott Hall needed to recover. Well, we'll see. I think it's the other way around. I think Ron the Truth just wants to literally beat oh. him to a pulp. But then again, like you said, the momentum has changed. Yeah, comeback time for Scott Hall. To the ropes. Saw that back body drop coming, did the truth. Caught him with the big boot. Oh! Drives him down face first to the mat. Classic size versus speed here. Cover, legs hook, two count. Hall barely able to avoid the pin that time. Just got the shoulder up to the satisfaction of referee Rudy Charles. And Scott Hall wants to win his first world title. As the heavyweight champ, he is gonna have to turn this around, Mike. He has literally been beaten from the ring of the bell. The truth has come out fired up. Hall able to avoid the offensive move. Oh, takes, him up, yeah. takes him up into the air, drives him back down to the canvas with the choke slam. Now, when 270 pounds slams your butt on a mat like that, most people don't get up. That's what he had to do, though, Mike. He had to stop. Run the true killings in his tracks so he could get his bearings. Oh, I gotta see that again. Both men get to their feet. The exchange of punches here, and Hall connected with two in a row, and then dropped him with a big discus right hand. Off 
to the ropes goes Killings, ducks the clothesline, but Scott Hall uh -huh. has him. And it is totally yep. turned around. Takes him overhead with the fall away slam. You know, we talked about Scott Hall maybe not ever seeing anybody with the speed and agility of the truth. There's not, I don't know if the truth's ever met anybody with the experience of Scott Hall. And the size as well. All put into that one pack. Oh, oh. Backdrop suplex off the middle ropes by Hall. This could be it. Fans His firmly first in their support of Scott Hall. Wait a minute. Oh, oh, oh. That's that Mr. Wrestling 3 again. Here it is. Scott Hall turns his attention to Mr. Wrestling 3, who once again has come out. Well, let's find out who it is. Here yeah. it is. That's He's got it. Who oh, is it? He's pulled it off. Who is that? I don't know. Come on, get the camera there. Wait a minute. What just happened? A the suplex. Truth. One, two, three, and he beat it. The winner of the match the camera and there. still NWA the heavyweight champion oh. of the truth. Ron Killings keeps the NWA World Heavyweight title. So many people have wanted to see the Macho Man Randy Savage back in the ring well, on December 5th at Turning Point. You're not just going to see him. You're going to see him team up with the phenomenal AJ Styles and the charismatic enigma Jeff Hardy. I can hardly wait. Turning Point. So many incredible matches. That preemptive strike by AJ Styles. To me, it just really adds intrigue to that incredible star-studded six-man tag team matchup that we have in store for you at Turning Point on December the 5th. You see right there, Scott Hall trying to play mind games with the phenomenal AJ Styles. I'll tell you what, AJ is too mentally tough. We know that, we've seen that in the history of TNA. I don't know that there's anybody more mentally tough than the phenomenal AJ Styles. Very tentative, sort of a feeling out process here in the opening minute of our main event matchup. Oh! That's a little show of disrespect right there as the toothpick is shot right at AJ. Well, we saw AJ earlier take the first strike against Scott Hall, and he starts this matchup with a pair of shots with four arms. Oh, but now Hall gets him up in the corner, Pete brushed him, and then the open hand chopped to the chest. Well, there's no doubt about it. Scott Hall's going to use his size and weight. He's got to plus his experience. That's the one advantage he has on AJ Styles, but AJ Styles has been up against him before. Series of chops. Hall now on the defensive. The two circle. Cradling another near fall. I'll tell you what, AJ Styles just, just trying to do fight any way that he can to roll up. Scott Hall, here's the third attempt and a pin, but he couldn't quite get it. Just a small taste, just a preview of what you will see at turning point December 5th. Oh, there's the power of Scott Hall as AJ went high. Scott Hall just found a chance to take the momentum and slam him down. He was talking about a preview of the six man tag at turning point, and now we see Scott Hall's longtime tag team partner, Kevin Nash. Make his way to the ringside area here in the impact zone. I don't know if that's been on camera yet. Now we see it. There now he is. Over the shoulder. You're right, Mike. There he is. And you know, Kevin Nash is looking at this for a couple of reasons. Number one, he wants to root Scott Hall on. Number two, he wants to get an up by close personal view of the phenomenal AJ Styles because at turning point, he's got to deal with AJ. He's got to deal with Jeff Hardy. And he's got to deal with Randy Savage. One of Hall's patented moves overhead release slam, follow cover, and the lateral press. Only a 
two count on Styles, of course, a turning point. It is Scott Hall, it's Kevin Nash, it's Jeff Jarrett, the NWA World's Heavyweight Champion, the self-proclaimed Kings of Wrestling against the phenomenal one, Jeff Hardy, and yes, the return of the Macho Man, Randy Savage. What a great match, what a great event it's going to be. Oh, look at right here, the teamwork, as Kevin Nash is, is pulling on Scott Hall to give him a little extra force, a little extra torque right there. I would not want to be Larry Zabisco if the time runs out on this match, who of course is the judge to have to make a decision on who wins. Well, you're right, Larry Zabisco is the judge in attendance from the championship committee, and if this match does go through the 10 minute time limit, he's the one that will render a decision. Abdominal stretch applied by Scott Hall, nearly neutralizing AJ at this point, and you see making contact with Nash, just to add a little bit of extra leverage. Oh, without a review of the referee, finally. Andrew Thomas saw it right there, and then AJ went for the elbow and missed. But AJ able to break loose that, you can see the pain that was on AJ's face. AJ really needs to regroup at this point. AJ needs to play to his own strengths in my mind, Don. Oh, absolutely. Don't try to, don't try to fight the kings of wrestling on their ground. You've got to make the territory. And that's what I'm talking about right there. Great kick by AJ Styles, something he does so well. Wow, moves just like that. And you see how glassy-eyed Paul is after Styles connects with the end zipper. He just drilled it. Well, AJ Styles can kick it from any direction at any place, any time. And generally, when you're not expecting a nice spin kick right there. How about that? Almost as if on cue. Just like he said, just like Don said. Then AJ charges at him, pulls line. Paul, well, he went down after the second one. I'll tell you what, AJ Styles right now has got the momentum. He knows he's got Scott Hall really. And this is his chance to take advantage of it. But again, remember the size and the strength. And Scott Hall threw him right at Kevin Nash. And that gives him the advantage. And now he's using his power. Choke slam, oh. hit it, hit No. The interference first by Nash leads for the Hall. Choke slam. But AJ still has life. Check this out. Steel chair. Kevin Nash has got a chair right there. Referee Andrew Thomas not telling him he can't use it. But Scott, Scott Hall. Wait a minute, AJ. Trying to get the momentum back. Nice elbow right there to the chin. And does. Momentum on his side. Doubling him over with the boot. Series of shots with the forearm as the Fox Box clock ticks down to near two and a half minutes left in our main event. The problem is, is referee Andrew Thomas is so preoccupied here with Kevin Nash that he's not following what's going on. Look at the strength of Scott Hall. AJ went springboard. Caught in midair. Caught in mid move by Scott Hall. Wait a minute, Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy. Drives up. AJ's got it pinned. Come on, one, two. Oh, Scott Hall just got out of time. Jeff Hardy drop kick off the top. Almost gave AJ the win. Now you're really getting a glimpse of what you're going to see on December 5th at Tony Boy. Jeff Hardy, AJ Styles, Scott Hall, Kevin Ash. The only thing missing, of course, Jeff Jarrett and Randy Savage. Styles elevated to the apron. Springboard. Oh, and he catches Scott Hall when he wasn't aware of it. Caught him flush, flying forearm by the phenomenal one. Hall's down. AJ, he just challenges him to get to his feet. Oh, he wants to do it his way. Wait a minute. He's going to go down. the world champion. Jeff Jarrett, and he catches him with the guitar. I can tell you that I have not received an update from the director of authority, Dusty Rhodes. We did, we were told earlier that Dusty was going to follow up that kidnapping of Randy Savage by the Kings of Wrestling. But Don, there's been no update. The bell rings. And it's time for Styles and Hardy to face the music and to face a two-on-three uphill struggle. You know, just a part of you was just hoping that somehow Randy Savage would find a way to escape and find his way here, but Obviously, you can tell that AJ Styles and Jeff Hardy aren't looking for him. I know they've got to deal with the situation. You know what? And that's what makes these guys great. When the information is not in your favor and you can't do anything about it, then you've just got to ignore it. Think of the history between the two individuals who are in the ring. NWA World's Heavyweight Champion Jeff Jarrett and the phenomenal AJ Styles. Don, some of the most incredible matches in TNA history have involved these two men. Oh, you said that right. And I mean, both these guys have beaten each other to, to you know, in, in matches where they've been, where they, the World's Heavyweight Championship is on the line. 
AJ Styles, two-time NWA World Champion, three-time X Division Champion, two-time tag team champion. This guy's unbelievable when you look at his resume. Only triple crown winner in TNA history, as you just documented. He did it twice! That's the most amazing thing. That's the most phenomenal thing of all. Right now, it's, it's fitting that the NWA World Heavyweight anyway, Champion, the phenomenal AJ Styles, start this out. I'm gonna tell you something. There is a way for Hardy and AJ Styles to win this thing. They've got to do it early. They've got to do it when they get a chance before the numbers game takes its toll on them. Let's face it, they have to play to their strengths. They can't try and go into a power game against the Kings of Wrestling. There's no way that's gonna work. They must play to their own strengths, which is their high flying, top rope moves. Just like that, two the little hit scissors tape over. Ooh, I'll tell you what, Jeff Jarrett, nice shot right there in the midsection of AJ Styles. He gets him in the headlock. And AJ able to fire him off. Oh, oh look at that athlete. Oh, he got up. Oh, beautiful kick by the phenomenal AJ Styles. Perfectly placed. You see the, the impact and the contact of that top foot and the drop kick? Right in the face of the champ. Look at the look on the expression on this. The face of Jeff Jarrett, he's like, oh, we gotta see that again if we can. Watch how he catches this kick. Look at this. Wow! Explosive drop kick from the phenomenal one. What do you think of these outfits? Oh, they're they the ball and net. Well, who is the king but Elvis Presley, right? The kings of wrestling. So now they're calling themselves the kings of wrestling. It's a little, it's another little way to get into the minds of these guys to show them what they think of themselves. Recently on Impact, we saw these two individuals square off. Scott Hall, AJ Styles, and it was the interference of Jeff Jarrett that proved the difference in that match as we see Hall. Shoulder blocks now, ringing out the arm and showing zero respect now, to they're, Styles. They're so cocky right now, and why shouldn't they be? They, they've got the numbers game where they want. They don't have the experience of, of Randy Savage in the ring. And I'm telling you something, they're just gonna play. Oh, that was heavy right there, man. Yeah, first the shortcut by Hall, hooking him in the eyes, then the knife edge chop. That's oh. what AJ Styles has gotta do. This is what you do. Bring it down, down to his side. Chop down that big six foot six tree. There you go. Look at that nice kick right there by AJ Styles. And Scott Hall's going, whoa! Another explosive drop kick by Styles. The Earlier to Jarrett, that one for Scott Hall. Oh, look at that. AJ Styles not calling out. Are you kidding me? Yeah, that, that, that takes some cojones. And you can tell some stones. You can tell by the look on Kevin Nash's face. Big Sexy was thinking the same thing as you are. Uh, and I, are you kidding me? Look at this. So he says hi. And now we are going to see Kevin Nash square off with the phenomenal AJ Styles because AJ called him out. A distinct height and weight advantage here, Mike. Let's see if AJ can exploit the speed that he has. Nash, that's trouble for AJ. I'll tell you what, he just shortened the distance really quick and he didn't give AJ Styles any time in a to get a maneuver. In an absolute split second he did it. Yeah. First was a... with the knee, then with the elbow, and then with the right hand. Yeah, I, I, I'll tell you what, AJ bit off. I understand his fire, we respect that about him. But sometimes they bite off a little more than they can chew, and man, you just don't, you just, you just, you just don't go through them one by one by one. Oh, but then again, he is the phenomenal AJ Styles. Well, drop kicks, that's been the offensive move of choice for AJ. He just reeled off three of them, and Savage or no Savage, we're seeing Styles and Hardy take control. Nice kick there by Hardy off the top rope, but that's what they're gonna do, they're gonna keep them on balance. Hardy hits the clothesline, now you've oh! so tall when he's right there on the floor of the man. Oh, perfectly placed by Jeff Hardy. Hardy able to turn this thing around. Nash in trouble, Nash oh. reeling. Again, the macho man Randy Savage kidnapped earlier by the Kings of Wrestling. Forcing Styles and Hardy to go into this oh, tag team match outnumbered. Cheap shot by Paul. Oh, Hardy answers. Jeff Hardy takes a couple shots and up within the big boot by Kevin Nash. You just can't lose your focus. You have to appreciate that Jeff Hardy was fired up. Great right hand, took down Hall, took down Jarrett, but then when he turned around, it was the big boot for Big Sexy. Well, you can see right there, now Jeff Hardy just taking the front of the boots from Jeff Jarrett as he's down on the bottom of the mat. The NWA World Champion now in total control, and look at this. Tripping for the camera that he does so well, and sending a message. Jarrett now gonna spring up the rope. Oh, crashing down. You can see that Hardy's lost his, his breath and Jeff Jarrett going for more. 
Jared, all of his weight, all of that 238 pounds coming crashing down across the back of Jeff Hardy while he had his throat across the ropes, and now Hall comes in, measures him and connects with the right, and then another right hand. Well, that's what they've got to do, too. They've got the numbers advantage. They've got the weight advantage. They've got to keep the, the proximity of the match very close-knit to them. They've got to do a lot of quick tags, and they've just got to do this. Choke slam, followed by the pin attempt. Hardy powers out before the three count. Not give Hardy and AJ Styles any chance to breathe. And they're not. Look at this, Hardy reaching over, trying to get AJ back in the ring, but Kevin Nash says, now it's my turn. Paul tags in Nash. One of his patented moves is this oh. slam. Dropping it down with the boy. Let's hook AJ in to make the save, and you can't blame him. No, it. you can't. I'll tell you what. You actually can't, but the fact that they're, they're outnumbered, it's a handicap match at this point. AJ Styles has got to do any dirty trick he can find. As you know, the Kings of Wrestling will do it. Tag now into Scott Hall. Hall picks up Hardy. And going to apply the abdominal stretch. Again, another move, Don, to weaken the opposition, but at the same time, keep them on your side of this six-sided ring. And you see Kevin Nash adding a helping hand. Well, they do that when they get the referee placed where they like it. And then they can get a little extra torque right here. Look at this. You see there, Kevin Nash pulling on Scott Hall's hand, and that just, that just makes it doubly strong and doubly hard on Jeff Hardy. Helps him with his leverage, helps him with his balance as well in maintaining the abdominal stretch. Jeff Hardy, man, he's got to get a tag to AJ. This is going to be over in a hurry. A unique oh, look submission at attempt here. Thought he was going to go for the STF, but instead he uses the death lock on the legs and now grabbing onto the hair of Hardy, just using the hair like a handle and then repeated paint press shots. And you know that this is part of their game plan. They're going to try to humiliate AJ Styles and Jeff Hardy because AJ Styles and Jeff Hardy stand for class. They stand for, for athleticism. They stand for everything that's good about wrestling. And again, just oh, a nice move by Hardy. Series of slaps by Hall. Hardy goes desperation. I think a grazing shot there with the kick, but he caught him flush enough to take him down. Again, Styles and Hardy without their tag team partner. Macho Man Savage kidnapped earlier by the Kings, but boy, they've gutted it out. Now they're going to watch the phenomenal one go to work. AJ Styles, he sat there, he had a chance to catch his breath. And man, did you see that? He caught Kevin Nash kind of kind of unawares right there. Nash was kind of looking off, not believing it. That's why AJ Styles is phenomenal. Oh, he takes the champion down. Florida on the cutting on. DDT. Oh, oh, not enough. Wow, could you imagine that? Styles, if he would have pinned Jared, he's gonna go for the clash here. Oh, but Jared's not gonna allow it. You can see that Jared just reached down, and, but oh, nice elbow. Jared was, AJ. Jared was not sufficiently weak. Oh, oh, did you see that? AJ Styles forgot that Kevin Nash was right there. Man, Nash just let him set himself up. When AJ went high, he took him down. AJ was going to attempt a springboard offensive move. You're right, cut off from behind by Kevin Nash. Unbelievable. The referee didn't even see it. He was. Oh, man. You see the Three impact there? Part, yes, and that's what happens. I mean, look at this. Let's watch this right here. Look at what Nash does. Oh, and the referee is over there talking to Scott Hall. That's the experience that yes. they have, especially as a tag team. Scott Hall distracting the referee. That just allowed Kevin Nash to knock AJ off the ropes. And you know what? That, that's, that's their philosophy. They know that Jeff Hardy and AJ are going to come out and give them some stuff. They know that. But they just know that eventually they're going to wear him down just like this. AJ ducks the clothesline. Hall catches him in. Oh, oh Scott Hall just flips him right behind his back. And you can see AJ's in pain. Off the overhead slam. Oh, he's got him on the ropes. Legs on the field, the ropes. Come on. Big referee Andrew Thomas spotted at that time. But they're just doing anything in every game. They just have a total disregard for the rules. Combined with the fact, on that, and you've mentioned it several times, how they have gotten under the skin of Styles and Hardy. I mean, you're right, that's part of their package. The Kings of Wrestling, they're known for that. Oh, absolutely. And they know without it, without any Randy Savage there to, to combat all this, that they could just methodically take these two out. Hardy and Styles have They've been got an impossible task in front of them here, Mike. They've it's been, going to be impossible. They've been gutsy. They've been courageous. Yeah. But to me, this is just an uphill struggle that I don't see how they're going to be able to win. Nash measuring him in the corner and... I mean, look at this. Big elbow. Mind games. Just humiliating him. 
Pulls him across, goes one, in. Hit two. two, no. AJ fights out, but look at this, he goes right for it again. Cover. He fights out of it again, you gotta give it to AJ. He's, he's at least showing everybody in the back that, hey, I'm gonna stand up to these guys. I'm not gonna give up. Still fight left in Styles. Tag in now to the champ, NWA World's title holder, Jeff Jarrett. They expose the ribs of Styles. Jarrett connects with the move. Now shot up into the ropes as AJ takes him up. Oh, right on the knee. It's the perfect follow-up move if you think about it. Yes, it is. Shot to the ribs, to the knee to the ribs. Is he gonna go for the figure four? He sure is. He's setting it away, but AJ! pack hard move! Oh, fights out of it. Perfect. AJ's going again! Got a quick roll up. Shoulders down and another two count. You know what I like that about AJ? He doesn't care how he does it. He knows he might have to steal it. Oh, he's trying to tag Hardy and Jarrett won't let him. And now Scott Hall comes in and just gives him some blow. Jarrett made the tag. Scott Hall is the legal man, but then Jarrett wisely, very smartly, hooked the leg of AJ. He's got that four plus seconds before he has to get out of the ring. He used all of that to keep Styles on their side of the six sided ring. And now Scott Hall. Kevin Nash and Jeff Jarrett just continue to beat on AJ. Oh, AJ Styles is just stuck in the corner here right now, and that's the problem. It, it, it's just too much size, too, too many numbers. Somebody should have stepped in, but you know what, Dusty Rhodes is, is too busy trying to find out what happened to Randy Savage. He didn't have time to stop this. Kevin Nash now legal. Nash in, takes AJ up and applies the bear hug. Get a wise move on the part of the Kings of Wrestling yes. here. Let's oh. take the wind away from AJ. Let's let's take all that breath out of his lungs. Not to mention, we saw that midsection take the blow from Jarrett on the knee. We saw him take the blow from the kicks. I mean, we've seen, I mean, look at this. Nash is just sucking the life out of AJ style right here. You're seeing how those series of moves, first from Jarrett, then from Hall, now from Nash, have weakened AJ. He's going to try and fight his way through. Oh, he's Elbow shots. Nice elbow shots to the back of the ear. Forearm shots as well. But he just, again, just, oh, just doesn't have Can he make the tag here? He's, he's so tried. close. He did. He's got it. But the referee never saw oh, it. Come on. Scott Hall came in. Scott Hall distracted Andrew Thomas. Oh. Andrew Thomas never saw the tag. And you can see Jeff Hardy oh, sees God. that. Oh, he is ticked oh, off. Oh, man, oh. that's just the way they're, they're just manipulating this every way that they can. And they're getting away with it. Now it's Jarrett's turn. Ooh, right hand. This is the Rock. champion. That time on left. AJ this time springs off the ropes, tries his forearm. What an exchange here between these two. I'll tell you what, blow to blow, and you can see now AJ just going crazy. He's, he's got to, he's just got to go on adrenaline right now. He's got to get some kind of an opening to tag in Jeff Hardy. Here he goes. Oh, they meet right in the middle. Mid-ring collision. Both men go for the cross-body block. Both men are down as the referee puts in the count. You hear the crowd here at Turning Point in Orlando. With the staccato hand clap, with the chance. Styles down, Jarrett down. Who's gonna be the first to get to their feet? Who's gonna give their team the advantage? Oh, you can see AJ going for a little, little help from the rope after everything that he's been through. You don't blame him, and AJ is up to his feet, but he's still cut off from Jeff Hardy, but he gets there. Hardy's not in, oh! Look at this, he doesn't give Jarrett a chance to hit him, he just goes right at him. Off the right hands by Hardy, Jarrett slings him up. Oh, beautiful move by the charismatic Enigma. Hardy caught Jarrett, now turns his attention to Hall, able to take down Scott Hall as well. You can see the blow right there to the back of Jarrett, and he's just anything to get, oh, but Nash comes over and grabs the, oh, great counter though by Hardy, great counter. Yeah, but when he turned his attention to Nash, it's the opening for Jarrett, but Hardy trying to fight through it. Oh, I'll tell you what, there's just too many of them, Mike. There's just too many of them, and he goes for the stroke, but Hardy fights out of it. Series of knees, went for the stroke, you're right, blocked by Hardy, he's going for the twist. Oh, what a shot by Hardy. Catch him down, payback from Victory Road. But that is, and there comes AJ on the top. Cross body block by AJ, go. count! Whoa, 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 just... Oh, oh Kevin Nash pulled the referee out and just decked Andrew Thomas. They have no respect, but AJ Styles gives him the great kick right between the ropes, but Nash didn't see it. AJ flying across the ring, drop kick Nash, sends him face first into the steel. Tell you what, uh, this thing is just 
they have given everything that they can. And it's everybody's out. Oh, wait a minute. What? Is that, it's Savage! He's here! The Macho Man kidnapped earlier by the Kings of Wrestling, and Randy Savage is in the building, and Randy Savage is making his way to the ring. You heard the roar of the crowd, and oh my gosh, the Kings of Wrestling can't believe it! They're playing backfire! Savage asking for Hardy to tag him in, and he is. Here comes the Macho Man! Savage has got Jared! Whoa, and there he gets levels of it! Think about it, he's fresh! Y Héctor así lo toma. Es bien importante la lucha. Una vez ya se enfrentaron en toda su historia y Héctor Garza ya le ganó a Scott Hall. I'll tell you what, Scott Hall, though, has got to have revenge on his mind. He, I know he gave Garza that guitar. He dared him to hit him with it. He did it not once, but twice. So Scott Hall is going to want to take out a little revenge right here. Hall and Nash playing their mind games with Garza. Series of chops, but look at Garza fight back with those big clubbing right hands. Y Garza no se puede dejar. Garza tiene que aprovechar este momento. Hector Garza is not afraid or intimidated by anyone. Think of the matches he's had since he's come back to TNA. AJ Styles, Jeff Jarrett, and no, hey, one of the greats in this business got all. Armando Quintero joins us for this main event. You can listen to Armando and his broadcast partner, Moody Jack Melendez, by pressing the SAP button. On your remote control, you can listen in Spanish every week on Impact as we see Scott Hall take control. Y como saben, Scott Hall y Kevin Nash de que el futuro de TNA es Hector Garza, lo quieren acabar esta noche. Oh, nice forearm right there by Hector Garza as he kind of takes out of oh. him. Puts the boot to him. Even I know that El Felturo de TNA has to be the future of TNA. Garza off the kick goes for the cover and oh, just a two count. I tell you what, we were so impressed with this guy, Armando, when he was in the Ultimate X competitions and, and all the X Cups. This guy is a star. Look the out! gets behind him and you saw the dirty move right there by Kevin Nash. Es una falta de respeto. No solamente se ponen los sombreros mexicanos y los arapes, sino son dos contra uno. What a shot by Kevin! Oh, but the distraction allows Hall to connect with a clothesline, go for the cover and get a two count. Tell you what, Nash took a smash to the face there. He got what he deserved. I tell you what, Garza's not afraid to make the first move. We saw it last week with Hall, and we just saw him lay out Nash. Hector Garza sabe que esta es la oportunidad de su vida. Takes him overhead with the slam. Follow pin attempt. Two count, Garza. Just even the power out. La semana pasada, Garza lo dijo. Quiero el oro. Quiero el cinturón de Jeff Jarrett. Y para ganar ese cinturón, tiene que ganarle hoy a Scott Hall. Oh, look at right here, as you can see, with the referee distracted, with the referee blocked. Scott Hall going for a little extra leverage. Leverage by grabbing Kevin Nash's hand. Abdominal stretch applied by Hall, reaching out to Kevin Nash. You're right, Don. Extra leverage. 
also just able to maintain and neutralize Garza in that position. No se vale, no se vale, son dos contra uno, dos contra uno, no se vale. Oh, you can see Nash right there playing. Oh, nice counter right there by Garza. High hip toss takeover, goes for an elbow drop, but Hall able to roll away. Héctor Garza, sin duda alguna. Héctor, la esperanza de todos los mexicanos, la esperanza de todos los latinos aquí en TNA. Garza's made it clear. He wants one thing, guys. He wants that NWA World's Heavyweight title. He wants the championship belt that's around the waist of Jeff Jarrett. Oh! I'll tell you what, everybody on this TNA roster gunning for that NWA gold. Scott Hall, pin attempt, gets two, and no! I'll tell you what, though, Scott Hall took him up there to the second rope and takes Garza all the way back. Scott Hall trying to show Garza a little respect. Hector Garza, sin duda alguna, viene de familia de luchadores. Su papá fue luchador, fue campeón en México. You're right, Hector Garza is from a wrestling family, second generation competitor in Mexico. As we see Scott Hall in control here against Garza. Garza gonna try and fight it off. And does, back body drop. Hector Garza not afraid of anybody, and he takes advantage of every opportunity. A nice shot right there for the leg, right into the ribs of Scott Hall, a nice right. Hector Garza sabe que tiene que ganarle a Hall y tiene al mismo tiempo que mantener un ojo sobre Kevin Nash. I couldn't agree more, Ramondo. <laughs> Garza hits from the apron, gonna go high risk, oh! Oh, nice move right there by Hector Garza, Whoa. showing his agility. And his speed, staying one step ahead of Scott Hall. 104 kilos de fuerza. ¡Patada! ¡Eso! ¡Eso, Héctor! ¡Eso! ¡Pégale a los dos! It's like he knows where Nash is going to be at all times, and he knows how to counter Kevin Nash. And now Garza are going for the tornado! Oh, man! He hit the baseball slide drop kick. He took Nash out of the picture. And then when he went high risk, it was zero reward because Hall cut him off. Oh, look at it right here. As you see, Scott Hall has got his... Pick. The numbers game just too strong for Garza. Hector Garza no pudo con los dos. Pero así no se vale. No se vale. Son dos contra uno. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The music can say to just one thing. Here comes Hot Rod. Here comes Roddy Roddy Piper. Oh, it's great drama. I mean, when you think about what that whole thing. Jeff Hardy, Jeff Hardy in a match of his own making, a ladder match. And he was in total control of Jeff Garrett at that time. Things were going right his way. He was getting ready to become the NWA World Heavyweight Champion. And then Scott Hall, one of the kings of wrestling, came out to Jarrett's aid and turned the tide in Jarrett's favor. And that cost Jeff Hardy that championship. And Jeff Hardy hasn't seen that championship or shot at that championship since. This is a chance for him to get some payback. Troubleshooting referee Rowdy Roddy Piper, interviewed recently by our website, TNAWrestling.com, and he made it clear that Scott Hall will not be able to hide behind his friends. Oh, look at that. I wonder wow. Scott Hall's or to hide foreign objects in either. A, you wonder if Scott Hall's ever been in that position before. Excuse me? Think about it. Did he, did he, you know, when, when Piper talked about oh, hiding... Oh, look at this! Yeah, hiding behind his he friends. What's he got, the kitchen sink as well? Roddy Piper, so familiar uh -huh. with the tactics of Hall and Nash through the years, and he's experienced them firsthand. Who better to have here than Piper as the referee? Now what's he doing? Look at this! Unbelievable! Scott Hall had every trick in the book. That's why he wore the Elvis costume out here. Because he can hide all the gadgets. And how smart now does the move by the director of authority, Dusty Rhodes, look? Oh, by bringing in Rowdy Roddy Piper? Absolutely, somebody that knows the dirty tricks of Scott Hall. What's he doing? Oh. He's gonna check out the hot rod right here. He's frisking Piper. And what's, oh, handcuffs. What do you think that was for? Questions need to be answered. Piper says, let's wrestle. Hardy open hand slap to the back of Scott Hall. How about an interesting trivia note for you? When Jeff Hardy started his professional wrestling career, 
his first match in the WWF, his opponent, Scott Hall, one in the same. Talk about their past crossing years later. It always comes full circle. Oh! Nice counter, nice kick by Jeff Hardy. Now that was perfectly placed. Oh, man. Shot off into the corner. Look at Hardy. Boy, I tell you what, he's no. on top of his game. He just crept up to the top of the ropes right there and just catching Scott Hall off balance. A unique double spring move there by Hardy. May have caught Hall unaware. It might have even caught Hardy a little bit. Looked like he kind of caught the top of his head. And I think Scott Hall realized that too. Hall going to position Hardy against the ropes. Now shooting across. Back of the clothesline by Hardy. Oh, you can see the size yeah, of the strength. Try, try to cross body block. Hall caught him in midair. Oh, man! Just picked him right over the back of his head and slammed him. Fall the away slam. Here's one. one. Here's two. Barely a two count from referee Piper. Oh, you, got, you know, I almost thought it was a slow yeah. count by Shell, but you can see Scott Hall feels like it was. Not happy with the cadence of the count. Oh, here we go! Oh, Hardy! <laughs> What'd you think of that one? Was that a little better? I thought that was a little quicker. Uh oh Oh, you yeah, quick Small roll package! Oh, think of it. Scott Hall is trying to figure this out right here. He knows he got a slow count. He knows Hardy got a quick count. So he's got to regroup and rethink what he's going to do. As you see Piper counting him out. And Scott Hall. Oh, oh, oh. Nice kick right there by Hardy to keep him out. Here goes Hardy over the top. Oh, catches him. And that wasn't, that wasn't a pad there that Scott Hall landed on. Yeah, Scott Hall was milking the count. Hardy not going to let that happen. Gunning for revenge. Ooh. Oh, man. Crash down across the shoulder of Hall, takes him into the steel, and again just tosses him, just flings him down to the floor. Looks like he caught his head into the ring post a little bit there, too. Jeff Hardy doing everything that he can to exact all the pain that he can on Scott Hall. Especially now knowing that Scott Hall, what Scott Hall had in store for him oh. with everything that he brought into the ring. Nice shot there by Hardy. Double leg drop by Hardy. Hall reeling here at this point. Even having a difficult time getting back up to his feet. Hardy's ready for him. Caught him with a pair of right hands. Ooh. Look at that. The elbow right to the back of the head to the back right there, man. He just got such a, just... He's exploiting the size advantage yes. that he has. Just that opportunity to reach back and to drill him with those elbows. Follow up clothesline in the corner by Hall. He used that weight right there into the corner, you can see, and just caught him with the arm over the neck. And here he goes again. Look at that. Just slingshooting that arm right in the neck of Hardy and just knocking the breath out of him. Follow up clothesline in the corner by Hall. Crowd here, chanting for Hardy to try and mount a comeback. Ooh, nice right right there by Scott Hall. And I'll tell you what, that was not open. Yeah, I was getting ready to say, Piper's now letting him know, make sure it's an open hand because that was a closed fist. On Hardy. Ooh, the version of the death the lock. Pulling back on the arm. Got the legs death lock. Cranking on the arm as well. And you're right. Grabbing onto the dreads of Jeff Hardy. Now just kind of trying to humiliate him right exactly there. Exactly what it is. Paint brushing him. I'll tell you what though. Piper trying to keep this thing fair. Right down the line. It's his job as troubleshooting referee when Dusty Rhodes puts you in this kind of a position. He's got when the hair again. Yeah, when the director of authority is relying on Piper to make sure that Hardy gets his opportunity for revenge. Hall, oh, pin attempt off the slam and... Nope, just two. Again, that count just... Did it seem slow to just you? Just a little bit to me. Just a little bit. And again, you can see Scott Hall just doing everything he can to humiliate him because he knows... Oh! Oh, he throws him right into Piper. Went to shoot him off into the ropes, you think? Or do you think that he had the intention... Oh, that was no of, accident. Fiery Hardy right into referee Piper. No accident at all. Hall was looking for every chance he could. Oh, what's he got here? Oh, you got to be kidding. Looks like brass nuts. He's got him taped up right there. He's got him in his hand. Wrapped around his hand. Hardy doesn't stand a chance if he gets hit with this. Oh, I love it, Piper in time. Oh, both the eyes. Not going to let him have the advantage. Yes. Caught him with the twist. Hardy. Is he going to go for the swan time here?
weeks ago we saw a beatdown on Nash by Hall and Six Pop. That wasn't too nice. So here we have it. $25,000 if Scott Hall can last the five minutes with Kevin Nash. I I like, if, you're, uh, you're, if you're Kevin Nash, you got to go right on the attack, don't you? I think so. He's going to need more than a toothpick. But that's Scott Hall, man. He kind of does his own thing. and you got to figure, I mean, you know, Kevin Nash is, I would assume, to be in much better ring shape than Scott Hall if you're going from a completely competitor's point of view as far as athleticism. And when it comes to strengths and weaknesses, who would know each other better than these two, Taz? No, 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 you're right. So if there's any, if there's any gap or hole in the game plan or in the arsenal of, of Nash, Hall can expose it and pull it out. Well, Nash was working on the lower back of Hall, but Hall able to turn it around against his former bandmate and now working on the arm. Well, you know, oh, big sexy. Scott Hall, Scott, look at that. just just disrespecting and kind of punking out Nash. Oh, I think that maybe ignited Nash, fired him up a bit. Well, we are well under four minutes left in this five minute time limit match as Scott Hall fights for the 25 grand and Nash gonna set Hall up into the corner here. Oh. The familiar yet very oh. effective offense of Kevin Nash oh. starts with a series of knees to the midsection. Big sexy Kevin Nash, a heavy hitter. Oh. Talk about heavy hits, look at that back elbow. And that elbow comes with oh. 300 pounds of force behind it from the big seven footer. Are those shots not vintage, no. Kevin Nash? I'm gonna try and get the word vintage in every Monday night. That's I've my noticed. new thing. Yeah, that's my thing. Well, look, this six pop. Watch out! Oh, they clip the the leg, and of course, we've talked so many times about how many knee surgeries that Kevin Nash has had through the years, and you now they they know the weakness of Kevin Nash. Well, attack from behind by six oh, pop. Oh, oh, he's got handcuffs. Yeah, six pop's got handcuffs. The referee's holding the 25 grand. This, but I guess it's not really a disqualification situation here, because in essence, it's not a match. I don't know why the referee's dead end if it's not. You ain't going nowhere. Lots of questions, not many answers, as Kevin Nash tries to fight back, even though he's handcuffed in the corner. Oh, man, this is bad now. Nash is in grave danger. Look, that's Eric Young now. Here comes Young. Thankfully, here comes his tag partner this Sunday at Destination X. Oof. And EY laying him in. We saw what he did to Six Pac last week. Yeah, but it's the numbers game, man. You know, it's, once EY had his back turn, Hall, Hall just drilled him in the back of the head. Oh, look at that right hand. Grounded him in the corner, bring him out towards the middle. You saw oh. the shot first from Hall and the face plant from Six Pac. Well, I think from a physicality standpoint, Hall and Six Pop sent that message crystal clear to their opponents for this Sunday at Destination X. Now they've got the 25 grand this Sunday at Destination X. They win the tag match, they get TNA contracts. They lose their band for life. Well, that you saw referee Andrew Thomas. That's what this match is about, as you pointed out, Mike. Hall and Six Pop win, they get TNA contracts. If they lose, thanks for coming. They're banned for life. Need to talk about the situation with Eric Young. He's been so supportive of Kevin Nash through obviously what's been a difficult time emotionally. I know Kevin has had a tough time dealing with having his, well, his friends, I guess you'd say. He had described them at one point as closer, tighter than his own family, well, only to see them stab him in the back. Well, good point, Mike. We've seen Six Pop and Eric Young, man, just have at it and just bang. I mean, the past several weeks on impact, fights and this and that. I mean, yeah, uh, the disrespect and the dishonor of yeah. being spray painted, Eric Young was by Six Pac. And we saw Eric get a slight measure of revenge against Six Pac. But I think that the bottom line here is to have them banned for life from TNA. Oh. Well, again, you see the quickness oh. of Six Pop. Fez press follow-up roundhouse right by EY, right on target. Yeah, EY, in my opinion, has showed a load of intensity the past several weeks during this whole situation with Six Pop and Scott Hall has evolved. Yeah, you're seeing that intensity from him as he rams the head of Six Pop into the canvas. 
Quick reversal, oh, cheap shot from outside by Scott oh. Hall, gets answered by Eric, oh. and then... But you see, that's tremendous strategy by... Sure is. Got a cover there by, uh, by Scott Hall. Momentary distraction from the outside yeah. forces you to turn right into the offensive move, the kick from six pot. And here comes big Scott Hall right now. A little bit of a size difference right here. Scott with the very well, familiar down low chop for EY as they lock it up. Well, you know, it's Scott Hall just kind of disrespecting Eric Young right in his face, saying, you know what, here, I got something for you. It's a mind game, it's a head game, it's a veteran move by Scott Hall. I think it's a good move. Grounding now, Scott Hall grounding with an ball. Paint brushing him at the same time and slapping him in the head. It's, yep. it's, it's one of those situations where you're not going to physically hurt Eric Young, but you're going to get into his head when you do something like that. Absolutely. Scott Hall, a lot of power. He's a large man. Scott Hall's a big boy. Going to go fall away and connects with that slam. Follow up cover. Scott on top for the pin and a near fall. Two count on Eric Young. Yeah, you've got to admit when it comes to Scott Hall and, and Six Pac, they've, they've got strategy here where they're they're well, tagging out, they, keeping a fresh guy in. And, well, six Pac and Six Mike, sorry to interrupt you, but Six Pac and Scott Hall, they have a chemistry. It's oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. it's years and years of competing together as, as a unit, a cohesive unit. So that natural chemistry is there. These guys are hanging on together, they're on a roll together, always partying together. Maybe a little too much. From time, yeah, time to time, we see, Ooh. oh, six pot go airborne, crashing down onto Eric Young. Hey, you know what, that was very impressive by six pot. Six pot was doing that kind of stuff before there was an X Division, to be frank with you. Uh -huh. Battle continues outside, uh -oh. Eric gonna uh -oh. try and turn it around, and that's one way to do it. Wow, right straight forward into uh -oh. the, right into you. Lower extremity and bag region, and Scott Hall one step ahead of Eric Young. Yeah, again, Scott Hall, six Pac showing the experience that they have working together. Scott was right there to help out his tag team partner after Eric Young had posted him. Eric Young might get counted out here. Referee counting, use your fingers. He's throwing his hand. How many numbers you plus six? All right. Eric back in, but the beatdown continues. Back to that tag team basic strategy. Gonna exploit the five count on the way out. Again, just... Keep him on that side of the ring at the same time. Oh, yeah, it's tag team wrestling one-on-one, -on -one, and you see Kevin Nash tried to tag the back of Eric Young to get himself in this match to no avail. And you see the height difference from Scott Hall. That helps with that rear choke. That sleeper version of a rear choke, when you have that height advantage, you have more leverage on the man. Boy, Eric's got to get it rolling here. He's got to get this thing turned around. And, I mean, he's got to get Kevin Nash into the match. Get the fresh guy in. Well, that's a good way to turn it around. Now it's a little tougher. Yeah, when the height difference ball. that you talked about earlier here for Scott Hall helps him out defensively in this move. Yeah, Eric Young's strong. He's got some thick guns and thick deltoids and stuff like that. So he kind of grounded it out, grinded it out. Yeah, oh. there's that, the, the height edge of Scott Hall as he's able to break the sleeper attempt by Eric Young. Well, Nash has got to be just tying to get in that ring and exchange with his former boys. Can Eric Young get over there and get Nash this match? He's got to do it. There it is. Here we go. Kevin Nash, what? the referee didn't see it? Because I, I guess, because, I don't know. What else could it be? I mean, six pocket coming at the same time. Now, what the what is it? Six pot. Yeah, Look searching for something Look underneath the, the ring. What's he got? It's like a can of something to spray, probably paint, knowing these guys, right? Oh! But uh, well, we talked earlier about how Eric Young was spray painted by it's Six Pot on impact, but now you're talking about being completely blinded. It's gonna burn the hell out of your eyes. Sprayed the paint right in his eyes. Well, wait. I don't understand how, doesn't the referee see the paint on Eric Young's face here? I guess the referee didn't see it, so he didn't. Oh, look at this, Eric Young. 
Yeah, just swing it for the fences, but he connects. At least a six pocket. Here comes Big Kale. That's what he needed. Kevin Nash just moves the referee out of the way. Oh, now what? Oof! The jackknife powerbomb for his own tag team partner. Kevin Nash doing the unthinkable. Wow. <laughs> just turning on Eric Young. Can you believe that? On, Making the tag official for the referee. The referee, uh, what, is he, what was the ref gonna do? I mean, Yeah, you're right. It's a load of, you know, you know what, but. Throw them to the Wolves at this point. Or the Wolf Pack. <laughs> Who's it gonna be? Paul, well, who, who's Six le Pac? Who's legal? Does it matter? I mean, gonna go for the edge here. There it is. And the double pin on Eric Young, and they've got TNA contracts. Your winner is Six Pack and Scott Hall. Well, there it is, <laughs> you know, the newest members to the TNA roster, I guess, right? Scott Hall and Six Pac, thanks to that boy, Kevin Nash. And Eric Young had been so loyal to Kevin Nash through, yes. through all of this, and now everything comes to fruition right in front of our eyes, and we see that it was all a charade on the part of Nash. Well, Eric Young never, I guess he never saw it coming. And apparently, they're not done yet. Like the crime scene outline. Well, there definitely was a crime committed several, well, there sure was. several during this match. Well, I guess for life, you know what, man? It's for real. They're back. The band is back. Yeah, they're not banned, B-A-N-N-E-D, for life. But they are the band for life. Well, that's, that's just a legendary faction right there. And it's back together in full effect. And the sacrificial lamb was Eric Young. Just as Eric Young came towards the cage, Six Pac took the steel door, slammed it in his face. Well, looks like the band had some sort of a strategy. Oh, and they executed that game plan, that strategy to perfection. Oh, what a spin kick by Six Pac Woo. right in the face of RVD. Wow, I'll tell you what, Van Dam ate that one. Six Pac drilled him in the jaw now. The match has officially started. Kevin Nash has got Jeff Hardy. Big size difference there. And now RVD tossed inside the steel cage. No, wait, wait a minute. Keep your eyes here on Six Pac. He's, he's taking the padlock. Where's there? Eric Young is uh... Eric Young is out on the arena floor. You can't see it. It's just out of camera range. There he's there he is. Well. That was from the attack. Well, a just as he came towards the cage when they slammed the door. Yeah, yep, he got blasted. It's a three-on-two situation now. <gasps> Gonna boil down to pin or submission to win it. But it is three-on-two because the band has locked Eric Young outside of the cage. Wow, this is not a good situation here for Hardy and Van Dam. They're trapped in there. They're trapped, and it has been all the fan, oh, even before the opening bell. That was RVD oh. that just went right into the side of the cage. And the band 
Six Pop Nash and Scott Hall. Vicious men, notorious for being out, violent, disrespectful, and vicious. Anything more disrespectful than a Bronco Buster over and over and over again on Jeff Hardy from Six Pac? Again, another reminder, special time next week for Impact on Spike TV, 8 p.m. Eastern and Pacific. We'll hear from Matt Morgan. It's the Pope versus Desmond Wolf and Kurt Angle, Mr. Anderson, in a ladder match, but Taz, this one has yeah, been well, all Scott Hall, hey, listen, Kevin Nash, and Six Pac. Like I said earlier, the band had a plan, and the plan is definitely playing out big time for Hall, Nash, and Six Pac. Well, here comes Van Damme with those kicks, and here comes Hardy. Both these guys give that utmost every time they compete. Three on two, four on two, whatever. Yeah, amazingly, RVD and Hardy had turned it around. Oh, nice! Just like that. Beautiful counter into that power bomb. Looks like Six Pac had some sort of a leapfrog or something in mind. Yeah, but Jeff Hardy had other thoughts, power bombing him directly down. RVD doing pretty well with Scott Hall and Kevin Nash. Yeah. Back rolling thunder. Oof! Nice chemistry between Van Dam and Hall. Oh, man. We saw that chemistry last week, that terrific tag team win over Beer Money Incorporated. And RVD and Jeff Hardy, oh. they, they've got it here. They've got the chemistry. They've got the ability, but they don't have the numbers. It's two against three. Hardy right up the back of his partner and right into Scott Hall. That was sweet right there. And chopping down that massive Redwood, the giant himself, Nash. And, oh, there comes. You can see the, the blood pouring down the arm of Eric Young when that cage door. Well, Eric Young's gonna get in his cage by hook or crook. But Six Pot gonna try and cut him off the pass, Mike. EY all the way to the top, but he's in that precarious position up there. And he's eating right hands. Here comes Van Dam behind. Six Pot, RVD said they'd have his back. And he, oh, well, taking a back. Pac just landed on his. Band members all uh -oh. laid out in the minute. ring. Wait, Mike. You might see some flying here. Both these men are reckless and dangerous. Van Dam one corner. Hardy on the other. Well, look at Ewan. Look at What's Eric he Young. Doing? RVD and Hardy strike. Eric Young. My God, he's on the top of the cage. Did you see that elbow drop off the top of the cage? Good God. Cover! Get him! He's got him! One, two, yeah! Here are your winners, Eric Young, Rob Van Dam, and Jeff Hardy! And we are back, and we are taking it to the streets. New York City street fight. Team 3D, Jesse Neal against the band, and here we go. Falls count anywhere, no disqualification. Well, Team 3D, I guess, had a little conversation with Hulk Hogan early tonight, and this match was made in uh, we heard last week, and I think that's what the band thought was going to be a traditional tag team match. That's why if we get a shot, Scott Hall's in street clothes. He was just going to be here in support. You know, he's very supportive. Yeah, yeah that would explain Ooh. that. But Hulk Hogan, Brother Ray, Team 3D, they've got other ideas, especially after what went down last week. Kevin Nash, Scott Hall, Six Pac, making their presence felt in a big way at the expense of 3D. Oh. Trash can shot to the head of Six Pac from Jesse Neal. And this is definitely in the realm of Team 3D, a New York City street fight. Falls count anywhere. Especially when, I mean, look, let's face it. Like the band or not, they, they had no prep time. They weren't prepared for this. How about the band, Taz, last week informing Hulk Hogan oh, oh, oh. that they were taking over TNA, but 3D, Jesse Neal, they've got other ideas. Yeah, well, I think the honeymoon's definitely over between Hulk Hogan and the band. Oh, man. Brother Ray's got Scott Hall lined up here. Yeah, got him in his sights. Oh, kendo stick shot to the back. Being 3D and Jesse Neal just wearing out the band here. Right out of the box again. In the world of Team 3D. Uh-oh. Oh, that's not good. This is going to be a little yeah, big. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Kendo stick shot on top of the trash can lid for six pop. Yeah, I think the uh, trash can lid did more to damage. How about Jesse Neal right off those rights oh. for Kevin Nash? Scott Hall just 
He don't know where he's at right now. Brother Devon. Oh! Choking him out with looks to be a piece of a cane or a kendo stick. Who knows? But Jesse Neal. Trademark match of Team 3D, the New York City Street Fight. And this one's right up their alley, and you're seeing why. Oh! This has been complete and total domination from 3D and Jesse Neal. I mean, you heard Brother Ray say, I mean, Hulk Hogan more or less gave him this match here. Gave them the opportunity. Oh, wow. Look at that kick to, to uh, Jesse Neal by six pop. That was heavy. The power that Hulk Hogan has. He gives Team 3D the green light, and they're taking it out on the band, and the impact zone is rocking. They're chanting and begging for the tables to come into play. Brother Ray is acting like he's a maestro. Very large maestro. Watch out! Oh! That's definitely a double, maybe a triple. Quick hands. Shot to the trash can. It was wrapped around the head of Kevin Nash. Scott Hall back in. Oh, there's a shot for Scott Hall, courtesy of Brother Devon. Scott Hall looking more dizzy than normal. More dizzy, that's not really good grammar, right? Oh, we got what you meant. Gotcha. I don't mean that in a bad way, I'm just saying. Team 3D, Jesse Neal, in full yeah. effect. God. I don't think that uh, the band has had one offensive move. Scott Hall tossed in for Brother Ray to slam it. Plants it, dead center, middle of the ring. Brother Devon's going to go high risk and head to the top. Upright split by Jesse Neal and Brother Ray. You know what's up. Yeah, incoming! <laughs> the band, as Taz mentioned, has had zero offense in this match. Six pack up to the apron. He gets knocked down. Fans demanding again to bring the tables into play. This might be a little anticlimactic. I don't think they need to use tables. I think the band might be done. Maybe look at it, Taz, as that exclamation point on the end of this New York City street fight. What the hell, it's legal. Roll the table into play. Tell you what, Team 3D and Jesse Neal hitting, hitting the band with everything in this match, except the kitchen sink and a lockbox. Spin kick misses by six pop, but that shot from Brother Ray was right on target. Whoa, 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 my God! Massive, massive backdrop. I got a funky feeling that uh, Six Pac might be going through that wood. Yeah, any minute. Place for Wait a minute. That's Bubba the Love Sponge, the associate of the band. What is he gonna do? Bubba's got that, that loose affiliation with, uh, with the band. And he came out here, he caught the attention of Brother Ray. That allowed Six Pac to get off the table. Oh, oh and drive him right through the wood. Oh, wow. Roll him over. Cover. And they get the win. Here are your winners, the band. You gotta be kidding me. That distraction. False count anyway, no disqualification. You can't claim the ref. He cannot disqualify the band. But the distraction by Bubba the Love Sponge was enough for six pop to capitalize and get the win on, on Brother Ray. That was the key. The radio shock jock, the associate of the band, Bubba the Love Sponge comes out, distracts Brother Ray just as he's getting ready to put six pop through the table, and the band turns it around and ends up getting the win. They just beat Team 3D in their trademark match, the New York City Street Fight. And here comes, whoa, 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 whoa. here comes the man that was stabbed in the back by Kevin Nash. Eric Young cleaning house with the hockey stick. Definitely some issues that aren't resolved between Eric Young and big sexy Kevin Nash. Kevin Nash, I got a bone to pick with you. And I'm glad you got out of this ring because for what I've got in mind, 
I'm going to need you in here all by yourself. And if it's okay with you guys, how about we surround the ring with a steel cage? So in St. Louis, locked down, Nash and Young, look into these eyes, Kev. I'm gonna get righteous. Oh, are you scared? Lockdown's gonna be huge huh. this Sunday. All Steel Cage pay per view. Eric Young gets his revenge on Kevin Nash. Well, I guess we have our answer <laughs> from T3D when it comes to facing Hall and Nash instead of Hall and Six Pop. Brother Ray saying that we're gonna open the cage door. It's St. Louis street fight time. It's well, no DQ. Yeah. It's anything goes. And yes, look out. Falls count anywhere. Here we go. That's a definitely a little wrinkle in the game plan. And here comes 3D. Right at Hall and Nash. Two legendary teams right now in a St. Louis street fight. I'm down with it. All about turning them loose at lockdown. Cage door open. Here go Hall and Nash. And Ever since we saw the reunion of Paul and Nash, as we see, oh, look out! Oh, my God! God. Brother Ray with a back body drop on Scott Hall right on the entrance ramp. There goes Nash into the steel guardrail, well, courtesy of Eva. This is the realm of Team 3D. You are in their hood right now. They're all about false count anywhere. They're all about street fight. Back in the original ECW days, we called this FTW rules, baby. That's what this reminds me of. There goes Scott Hall. Over the guardrail, into the crowd. Kevin Nash is down. 3D has taken total control of this St. Louis street fight. T3D will keep the heat, the pressure, big time, on Hall. Oh, and Nash. Ooh. From the moment we saw the band reunite, they have made their bad intentions clear when it comes to Team 3D. <laughs> and this is the opportunity oh, yeah. for Brother Ray and Brother Devon to get back on Paul and Nash, and it's exactly what we're witnessing with a crowd in St. Louis. Oh, oh God, Final put, shot to the head. Place is going crazy here. Bodies flying. This is insane. <laughs> it's the insanity that you can expect when it comes to a street fight involving Team 3D. <laughs> How about that for some cross chops and a double sledge? Again, this is uh, right up the alley of Brother Ray and Pro Brother Devon. And they may take it to the alley. Yeah, that could happen. Well, let's face it, yeah, Scott, uh, I'm sorry, Kevin Nash competed in a very physical battle earlier tonight with Eric Young and trying to do the right thing for his boy Scott Hall to, to, to compete with him. Yeah, because if Nash doesn't come out here, Scott Hall would be in a one-on-two handicap match. Well, Hulk Hogan, uh, you know, as you said, you got word. You know, basically told Hall, you better find a partner, or, or, or that's that. Oh, you'll be in a handicap match against T3D. Brother Devon's offense <laughs> stopped by Hall, and then while Hall holds Brother Ray, Nash with the big boot. Well, again, this isn't uh, Hall and Nash's first rodeo, if you know what I'm saying. Well, you know, even though Team 3D had everything in their favor right there, now it's like a two-on-one situation in the cage here. You don't have a camera on Brother Ray right to my right at the table here. He seems to be out like a light. Oh! Speaking out like a light, Brother Diva might be out like a light. That really is the key, because with Brother Ray down and out on the concrete, this enables Scott Hall and Kevin Nash to work their double team magic on Brother Devon as we are witnessing. Yeah, see now Hall and Nash is picking apart. Look, look, Scott Hall just trying out muscle Brother Ray. Keep, keep him out. That's, yeah, that's a good strategy. Yeah, preventing Brother Ray from entering the cage. Well, it's like Devon's like a, a trapped animal in there with a couple of wolves. A frantic brother Ray circles the ringside area, circling the steel cage, but Scott Hall's not letting that grip loose. Brother Ray's 
kind of beside himself. You don't know what to do here. Brother Devon getting the hell beat out of him. Now Nash is. Oh, Nash is. You're right now. Nash is the one that's holding the door. Yeah, it's a uh, good strategy. I was going to say it's it's ingenious on the part of Paul and Nash. Wait, wait, wait. Oh. Brother Ray's got him something steel channel. What you going to do with it again? Oh! oh! That'll loosen the grip of <laughs> Kevin Nash. It'll break a few fingers to it. That'll split your face open the boot. Cage door. Swung with that incredible velocity into the face of Nash. And now here comes Brother Ray on the attack. Oh! Tell me what that's like, Taz. <laughs> I can't explain it. It will buckle your knees. And make Brother, me say please. Brother yeah. well, Ray's got some of the most devastating chops I've ever been a part of. Hall scooped and slammed. Oof. Devon, big shot in the corner on Nash. Oh, they're rocking and rolling in St. Louis at lockdown in this St. Louis street fight. Anything goes, falls, can anywhere. And there's <laughs> a lot of things falling inside this cage. 3D with their own band reunion in the corner of Hall and Nash. Oh, turn brother Ray loose. Choo -choo. Oh. That's a big ass caboose coming at you right there, buddy. 300 plus pounds of runaway train in the corner. A hole, hole and Nash not looking too good at all right now. You know what's up? We're about to find out. Can Devon put it through the posts? Oh, well, he's got a good ratio of field goals. Yeah. Well, that's three points. Still 100%. What's up off the top? That's pretty simple. Again, I kind of feel for Hall and Nash here. Let's face it. Like I said, Hall competed earlier. Nash competed. Yeah, Nash competing earlier. I'm against sorry, Nash. Young. Nash competed. I got hit with so, the table. So all of a sudden, you're feeling sorry for Hall and Nash. Uh, a little bit. Feel a little Ooh. sorry for him. I'm not over here crying. Don't get me wrong. I'm not going to lose sleep over it. <laughs> Crowd in St. Louis for this St. Louis street fight. Uh, Insist that the table comes into play. I don't think Hall realizes what about to hit him here. It's a little three and a little D. I think you can count, Andrew. He's got him. Two of your winners, Team Three Right now. Oh, yeah. You heard it from Taz. It's a little three. It's a little D. And it leads to the one, two, three for Brother Ray and Brother Devon in the St. Louis Street Fight. Well, two legendary tag teams in the history of this industry, Team 3D and Hall and Nash, beating the holy high hell out of each other. At the end of the day, Team 3D gets the proverbial Duke with 3D to a table. There you have it! Wow! Timing is everything in life! And the band picking their spot? Oh, man! And Matt Morgan, the blueprint, There's a... <laughs> you laid out unconscious after Samoa Joe hit him with the muscle buster. You talk about timing, Nash down for the cover. Referee Hebner counts one, two, we have new Tag Team Champions. Ladies and gentlemen, your new TNA World Tag Team Champions, Scott Hall and Big Sexy, Kevin Nash. Well, the band with Kevin Nash at the helm, picking out the scraps that Samoa Joe left behind and Matt Morgan, and we crown new Tag Team Champions right before sacrifice. They've done it again. And the band are the new TNA World Tag Team Champions.
you know, if you're a tag team, you don't know if you got to prepare, prepare for EY and Nash or, or EY and Hall or Hall and Nash. You don't know. And you got to be right now if the Motor City Machine Guns, we crown them as the number one contenders tonight. Well, they crowned themselves, I should say. Look at that. But you know, they're watching this matchup with a keen eye. Slapped the taste out of Hall's mouth, did uh, the Prince of Punk. Shannon Moore. As Taz mentioned, Chris Saban, Alex Shelley, victorious. Our opening match tonight at Sacrifice. They move into that number one contender slot. And I'm sure they are very interested observers in watching this match to see if the band retains or if Ink Ink is able to get the win and become World Tag Team Champs. Right there, that's classic Scott Hall there, getting his opponent down, kind of disrespect him, slapping him back in the head a little bit. Get him a little frustrated. It's a smart strategy. Watch Whoa, this roll up. Nice recovery by Shannon Moore in that he didn't allow himself to be frustrated. He didn't allow Scott Hall to get into his head. Well, you know, look, it's right now, you know, you heard Nash say it. I mean, look, Ink Ink, they're a young team. I mean, they, look, they, how many tag matches have they had together? It's one. 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 And uh, Hall and Nash, they've had about, I don't know, 7,000. You know what I'm saying? You're in the neighborhood. Yeah, so, you know, you're giving up a world of experience and size. But if they could utilize their quickness, they being Ink Ink, they might crown new champions tonight here. Off the corner clothesline, Hall goes to follow up again. This time Shannon Moore able to get the knee. Oh! Up to Hall surprises him then with the drop kick off the middle rope. Thought he was gonna go for the spin kick. Yeah, Scott Hall, I don't know. He was gonna get up, then he decided not to. He must have saw that uh, Shannon Moore was gonna do something a little funky. Off the quick reversal. Moore that time able to come back and Hall couldn't avoid the spin kick. Well, he blocked it, Hall did with his face. Well, Hall, you know, Hall's smart enough not to get frustrated. You see that Shannon Moore's trying to frustrate Hall. I don't know. Maybe I, I sense a little soon. bit of frustration on the part of Scott Hall. At the same time, the look on the face of Shannon Moore tells me that, well, Ink Ink is pretty confident tonight, and here comes Big Sexy into play. I'm looking at a height difference here, and Kevin Nash, Kevin Nash, He's saying he wants Jesse Neal. Well, Jesse Neal ain't much taller. <laughs> Not that height matters. There's the experience. Go for the lockup, and instead, Nash catches you off guard. Well, knee to the midsection, and now you're, what? You got to deal with Nash in the corner. Well, I think you're speaking of experience. That's part of the reason why Nash said to Shannon, you know what? Give me Jesse Neal because. No, Nash knows that that Jesse's the least experienced man in sure. this match. Why not? Take the new guy, right? Sure, sacrificial lamb if you can. I don't understand in my view why Shannon would do that. Which is because you told me you want me to tag my partner. The heck with that, I'll do what I want. But then again, I'm not, you know, I'm not in this match. And all of a sudden, the big seven-footer was down in the corner after the headbutt, but fights back again with the knee. Turns it around on Neil, and now he's able to extend the leg as big Kevin Nash with that boot right against the throat. Well, you can see that, uh, look, we've seen oh. Jesse Neal, he's got a lot of intensity. But right now, he's got a, whoa, 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 he's back. caught him with the clothesline from outside. Nash tries to take advantage of the situation, but only gets two. Yeah. Jesse's in a wrong part of town right now. You don't want guys with the experience of the tag team champions here, holding Nash, to cut that ring in half. And this right here, frequent tags. Hall and Nash will beat the living daylights out of you if you let them. Got to try and make that ring bigger, bigger if you're Jesse Neal. An abdominal stretch now by the much taller Scott Hall. And I say taller because we have a height advantage on the, someone with an abdominal stretch. You really can get more leverage on them, more leverage, which is uh, why I never did abdominal, abdominal stretches in my day. Thanks, Mike. Jesse Neal. <laughs> Jesse Neal trying to get the offense started here, but Scott Hall has got him in a position where he just can't get it rolling. And now, speaking of a little extra leverage, or leverage as the case might be, Nash gets involved from outside as well, stabilizing the abdominal stretch of Scott Hall. Got to try, and if you can, to get low, sweep a leg or some sort of a hip toss if you're Jesse Neal. But I'll tell you, Hall's got that in. Tight is sort of uh, hip toss for Jesse Neal. That's what I said. Ooh, close enough. Hip toss, leg sweep, anything that works. 
But as Taz talked about earlier, the experience of the band in terms of cutting off the ring enables Hall to keep Neo and then turn it over to Nash. Uh, you don't want Kevin Nash teeing off on your big sex and will wear you out. Oh, right there. Try and get a tag, Jesse. There you go. This is what they need That's to it. exploit. Quickness, speed. Oh. Outside in, shoulder first. Rolls in off the back of Nash. Drop kick for Hall. Shannon Moore on fire. Yeah, Shannon Moore. Shannon Moore definitely picking up the intensity here. Trying to get... Uh -oh. Oh. Shannon Moore trying to use his quickness. What he did, avoids the contact, goes cross body, got the big man down. Rolls through and now turns it over to Jesse Neal. Ink, ink. Oh, yeah. Gonna go double team, snap of the neck right there. The orgasm and then the shot for Scott Hall. Yeah, well, Jesse's legal though, Jesse's the legal man. Jesse's got him lined up for the spear. Here it comes! Went for the spear, oh, oh. but Nash sidestepped him and Slick Johnson got squashed in the corner. Again, that's the more experienced Kevin Nash. Jesse's timing was off just a teeny bit. The referee got inadvertently nailed. Jesse bringing those forearms right to the jaw of Kevin Nash. You see that intensity? Yeah, that's Eric Young now. Third member of the band, Eric Young, coming down towards stick. the ring. He's got a Sneaking up behind, tosses it over the head of Jesse Neal. Oh. Swing and a miss, strike two. Oh. Contact made between EY and Jesse Neal. Nash uses the stick oh. on Shannon Moore, but then there's the spear by Jesse Neal. Well, if I'm Jesse Neal, I'll get that kendo stick and wear out Nash while the ref is down. And I think that's what Jesse's gonna do. Do it, kid, don't waste time. Open season for Jesse Neal with the ref down. And Eric Young cut him off, takes the kendo stick away. What the, what the hell? Oh, God, what a collision. Brother Ray, collision. team 3D from behind like a freaking freight train. Well, the Ray just drill. Oh, speaking of drilling. Kendo stick shot to the and top of the head. Him, we talked about this he earlier, brother, the issues between 3D him. and the band. You're looking at that, I'll take the brakes out. You hear me? Oh, no. Well, a lot of issues with oh. oh, my God. What the? The teacher, Brother Ray, just knocked the hell out of the student, wow. Jesse Neal. Hey, sent a very mean and violent message, did Brother Ray. Right to Jesse Neal. And Eric Young drags the body of Nash over for the cover. Tries to revive the referee, and Slick Johnson counts two and three. Congrats on the match. And still, uh, TNA World Tag Team Champion. Well, you heard Brother Ray earlier say to Brother Devon, he was a little ticked off and got a little insulted by what Shannon Moore and Jesse what well, King said to them that officially, you know, we'll, we'll do your dirty work, and I'm paraphrasing that, but. And, uh, you know, Bubba, he, he's a hothead. He's got a bad temper. And, and with Devon, he's more of the cooler head. Uh, so, it seems like all's good in the hood right now. Still got to compete against each other on this match. Now, fill me in on banned rules here. This is a non-title matchup, so whether it's a title defense or a regular match, they have banned rules, and you never know who's going to compete. But Eric Young, obviously, but then we look to the corner, and we see both Scott Hall and Kevin Nash. Sounds like you filled yourself in, Mike, but yeah, you're right. I'm a little confused on that myself. <laughs> Whoa! I don't know why we have, uh, I guess it, We'll see which one of them is going to compete. Will it be uh, Hall? Will it be Nash? Right now, Young is getting bounced around here by Shannon Moore. Oh! Shannon Moore, quick shot on EY and goes for the cover. And you've got to be impressed with Ink Ink as a tag team. Shannon Moore, Jesse Neal, especially since they've only been a team for a couple of weeks. Yeah, they're just trying to find their sea legs right now, Ink Ink, in my opinion. I really think, well, watch out here. Look at that. Nice counter to that bulldog. Perfect reversal oh, oh. leads to a cover and an ear fall. Mike, I really think Ink Ink's got a tremendous upside here as a team. Good looking young team with a lot of exuberance. Uh, good skill set right here. You can see both men look very similar with the wacky mohawks and a lot of ink on their bodies. A little help from Shannon Moore leads to a Jesse Neal cover and a two count on Eric Young. 
surprising situation right off the top of this impact broadcast, which will lead us to AJ Styles. No, he's not going to face Jeff Hardy, as many anticipated and thought watching the early action on impact. But it's going to be AJ against, of all people, Mr. Anderson as Jesse Neal springs into the crossbody. Well, back to Ink Ink real quick, Mike. You know, I, it's, you can start there. You can start to see how they are gelling as a team. You saw that double team maneuver right now. Jesse's not doing too well against Eric Young, but Ink Ink is just going to start evolving into a better team, I believe, in my opinion, as weeks evolve here on Impact. As we make our way towards the eight-year anniversary of TNA Slam anniversary, big slam appropriately by EY, and then <laughs> oh! you see the blind tag from outside yep. by Brother Ray. You'll want to check out TNA Slam and Celebration Slam anniversary weekend in Orlando, Florida. All the details at TNAWrestling.com. See right there, look like. Uh, Brother Ray wanted to drop a heavy elbow. Wow. It missed, but that heavy clothesline didn't miss. Look at Neil, about don't know where he is. What a shot to the head. Yeah, well. The, the, teach, <laughs> the teacher is really oh. taking oh. it to the student. Well, this is, a, in my view, this is a uh, perfect example of tough love right here. And that hurts like hell, I'm telling you. <laughs> you yeah. hear the sound of that shot, that slap just echoed, it reverberated throughout the impact zone. Hey, I mean, after this match, uh, uh, nice cross face there. After this match. Nice cross face. Jesse yeah, Neal. Uh, not, not if you're Jesse Neal, it's not a nice cross face. Well, I'm a big fan of him. I mean, looks like Devon's throwing the flag, wants to get in there. Devon's a little upset, and uh, I, I've never seen Ray. I, I don't recall ever seeing a situation like that with 3D before, and we, we've talked about this the last uh, couple of weeks. Yeah, but, with, I don't know, hold on, let me cut you off. I'm a little confused and a little disappointed here in Devon, in my opinion. It's a match going on here. I can appreciate that Devon has respect for Jesse Neal because he trained him. This is, you know, in the spirit of competition here. That's just the way I see it. You think that, that Brother Ray was going a little too, too rough on Jesse? Well, I mean, it's Brother Ray. Well, it's a match. It's a, match a wrestling with, match. You're in a match with Team 3D. You better be prepared to bring it against 3D. Shannon Moore, quick roll up. Hey, not I, able look, to put away Devon. I know Devon a long time, too, and Devon. <laughs> He's not usually too nice himself, so uh, but I just think Devon, he's got to try to be careful not to get mixed up him and Brother Ray on so again. Blind tag, tagging himself in. Oh, I don't think I don't think Devon's happy about that either. Double clothesline from behind, taking down and taking out both members of Ink Ink. You can see Brother Ray going right back to Jesse. That's that is his talk. Well, I guess maybe Brother Ray didn't cool off. After seeing that fist bump early on, thought everything was whoa, cool. Whoa, whoa. Between the two, beating the snot out of this kid right here. I'm telling you. Well, Brother Ray just said, "Shut up, Devon," and instead of uh, Devon get the tables, it's more like Brother Ray getting a weapon, a steel chair. He's gonna get disqualified here. And look at the band. See the band in the corner. They're kind of just like, huh, "Let's get out of here." Jesse Neal Spear, two and three, and he beat him. The winners of the match, Inc. Inc. Well, I think Brother Ray got a little too emotionally uh, invested in this match here. Lost his focus. Inc. Inc. victorious in this non-title three-way matchup. And looks like trouble in paradise between Team 3D. I mean, you got to really, you know, let's be honest here. You see someone like Morgan <laughs> positioned on a ring. You hate to say poetic justice, but after everything that the blueprint has done to Hernandez and other tag oh. team partners, and well, this is this is just like the band, isn't it? Well, we got great timing. <laughs> the winners oh. of the match, the band. They did it again. They beat the system again, Taz. It's just they got phenomenal timing and a little luck on the side of the band. Matt yeah. Morgan versus Hernandez. Slam anniversary. Sunday slam anniversary to Christy Hemi with the TNA champion Rob Van Dam.